Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of PlayOnSports.com broadcast of Lewisburg Patriot Baseball. And tonight, game one of the North Half Championship Series against the Kosciuszko Whippets. Live in Kosciuszko, Mississippi, I'm Michael Plumley, along with Al Ainsworth. Al, game one and a very exciting chance to get to that state championship game. Both teams coming off pretty exciting quarter fi- uh, semifinal matchups before the north half. Kosciuszko, the home team tonight. What do you think? Wow, this is a great playoff atmosphere here tonight. they got the white T-shirts. It's a whiteout night here at Kosciuszko. I understand this idea uh, came into being Tuesday, and they pulled it off by tonight. Uh, that says a lot about the atmosphere here. It was absolutely packed when I got here over an hour before game time with their fans all over the place. Wonderful looking atmosphere here tonight. We've got a cozy ballpark here tonight, 355 to the corners there in center, uh, 315 down the right field line, 305 and left. Not a lot of foul ground. Uh, we do have quite a bit of area around the, the uh, catcher's, mount, uh, catcher's uh, area. Uh, but, wow, what a, what a night for baseball. Beautiful night. We're down to four teams left in 4A. We've got Lewisburg and Kosciuszko who both went the limit in their last round to get here. And then in the south, uh, Newton County's kind of had an easy time of it so far. Uh, and they're facing, uh, in what has to be the biggest upset of the 4A playoffs so far, the St. Stanislaus Rockachaws, who uh, <laughs> advanced over 10 times state champion West Lauderdale. So we're down to four, and the baseball gets really good at this time of year, Michael. Coach Rusty Cagle has been in this position before just a year ago, able to knock off uh, Lafayette which was a conference rival, knocked off Lafayette, getting to that state championship game to face Purvis and losing game three, a very exciting state championship game. Kosciuszko got through Tishomingo County last week. Lewisburg had a tough series with Houston, building on the momentum of of that great win on, on Saturday. I'm sorry, was it was Monday night. Monday night, yeah. <laughs> Exciting. And, and the Patriots played like they have been playing all year. Coach Rusty Cagle bringing in the 26-7 and seven Lewisburg Patriots down here to face Jonathan Jones' Whippets of Kosciuszko. They have a 27-7 and seven record. Class 4A North Half Championship ought to be very exciting. Head coaches are now at home plate exchanging lineups and Speaking of lineups, we'll start with the visiting Lewisburg Patriots. Lowell Haney will be in left field. Number three, he'll be out and left for his second start of the year in place of the injured Gabe Brown. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Hitting 330, Rudy Martin will be in center field, the team leading hitter uh, and a very serious threat on the bases. Rudy Martin hitting 462, number four, number two, Hunter Wilson will be at shortstop tonight, hitting 347. Tanner Lloyd will be on the hill tonight. We'll talk a little bit more about that, hitting 280 in that four hole. Cody Cooper will be behind the plate, batting 321. Mason Givens at third base, hitting 367. Only getting his second playoff start of the series. Actually, his third playoff start uh, tonight. For the sophomore hitting 367, as I said, Colt Smith will be at first base tonight, hitting 284. Kobe Busby will be moved from third base to second base, hitting 286. And Chris Taylor in right field, hitting 227. And pretty much a stable lineup for most of the season, except for Givens. Uh, in place of Gabe Brown for the Patriots. It has been, and, and uh, we, we looked at several different guys who made key contributions. You had great playoffs thus far, great numbers for, for Rudy Martin, uh, for Cody Cooper, who's really been hitting the ball well. Uh, also for Mason Givens coming in those last couple of games, and just I told him he had a, a, a new first name, the Red Hot Mason Givens. Yeah. And uh, so those guys have had great playoffs. But even some of the other guys whose averages are not quite as high throughout the playoffs have delivered big hits. And I think of uh, uh, Friday night, uh, Kobe Busby hit the double down the line to give us the lead yep. against Houston. And then it was Rudy Martin with a three-run homer on Saturday. And then uh, Tanner Lloyd with a big two-out, two-RBI double on Monday night to send the Patriots to the championship series for the North. And a bat that's been missing for most of the playoffs as Tanner Lloyd got things going 
couple of hits there in game three. Much needed, too, as Patriots able to get that 8-4 to four victory and move on to play, face Kosciuszko. For Kosciuszko, Jonathan Jones' team, for their starting lineup, Ryan Rigby hitting 4-12 on the season. He's also going to be the starting pitcher tonight. Connor Hill will be at shortstop hitting 388. Ben Hudson will be at first base hitting 330 on the season. Dylan Gentry in the four hole, third base tonight hitting 333. Wesley Dew will be behind the plate hitting 326. Austin Parker will be in center field hitting 358. Tim Wade will be in right field, a 192 batting average. Nick Frank will be the DH tonight hitting 253. He's DHing for the left fielder Overstreet and Rivers Dickerson will round out the lineup for the Whippets. 314 batting average playing second base. And Kosciuszko, Rigby, Ryan Rigby will be the starting pitcher. Comes in tonight's game, Al, with an impressive 1.94 ERA, an 8 0 record, 58 strikeouts, and 47 innings pitched. He's really been their go-to guy. Well, and even better numbers in the playoffs where he's 3-0. and uh, He's made three appearances, uh, two starts and one in relief, and has won all three of those outings. Uh, is holding opponents to a 104 average over those three outings. So the runs are going to be at a premium. The, uh, the whippets don't give up many uh, extra base hits. They've actually given up one home run all year. And you look at a park like this and think, well, there's going to be some home runs here. But they've hit one as a team. They've given up one as a team. Both teams able to get uh, a perfect record in, in uh, district play. Both teams went 10-0 and this season and was the beneficiary of a first-round bye. So, really, I mean, the players are pretty fresh. I mean, most of those first-round teams are all now eliminated and just left up to Kosciuszko and the Lewisburg Patriots and it should be a great time. Well, we I feel like Lewisburg has uh, has actually become the the seventh member of Region Four because we had the second place Caledonia Confederates in the first round, the third place uh, Houston Hilltoppers in the second round, and now out of the same district we have the Kosciuszko Whippets <laughs> in the third round. Last year, three out of the four teams that made it to the semifinals were all from the Lewisburg district, as uh, Lafayette and New Albany also had deep playoff runs. This year, it looks like it's Region. Four's turn to, to represent. Right. Well, it ought to be a great night for baseball. The rain was able to hold off. We thought that uh, it may rain. Pretty easy trip down here, straight down 55 off the Vaden exit. Rolled right on into Kosciuszko, right on time to bring you the broadcast. And uh, the players look all refreshed. I know the Patriots spent some time at Holmes Community College today, getting in a little practice earlier today before they we're able to take the field here at Kosciuszko. Spent a little time getting lost in Kosciuszko, just as we did. <laughs> we were we were uh, driving around trying to find our way here, me and my, my 10-year-old, and uh, bumped into the bus along the way, and we had some fine folks in Kosciuszko that guided us right to the park. And there are a lot of fine folks in Kosciuszko, really support their team and uh, the community. Like you said, they're all dressed in white tonight. Should... Uh, pose for a big threat to Lewisburg and then having that fan support and hopefully it's something that we'll be able to see tomorrow night back at home. Must be a lot of Mississippi State fans making uh, making uh, decisions around here on uniform colors. We faced sure. three teams from the same district, all three maroon and white. <laughs> you think there's a little bit of influence? Could be. A couple of guys up in the booth going, well, you see where the Lewisburg Patriots are from with the red and blue. You think they had a little influence? And I reminded the folks up here, a lot of them are Mississippi State fans anyway. So, anyway. And, and a few of us representing Southern Miss. <laughs> That's right. And Delta State. <laughs> so, as the Kosciuszko Whippets take the field in their starting lineups, we're going to pause for a commercial break here. We'll be back with first pitch action Live from Kosciuszko, Mississippi, it's game one of the Class 4A North Half State Championship. We'll be back. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One shot. 
杀死。And welcome back to Whippet Field in beautiful Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Just drove down through here a couple of weeks ago, heading over to Philadelphia, Mississippi. And it's that small town atmosphere. You know, you drive into town, there's uh, a home of a Whippet here, uh, signs in a lot of yards, a banner across the street in Balloons. town. Balloons. Absolutely. It's <laughs> just, they support the team. It. Well, it's important for the Patriots to get off to a – early start in this game and build on some of that momentum. It'll be tough up against Ryan Rigby. Like I said, a 1.94 ERA. 8-0 on the season. The man has carried this team, a junior right-hander. And the Patriots are going to want to grind out some at-bats tonight. Make him throw a few pitches early. Uh, make him uh, make him go to that bullpen. Uh, this time of year, Michael, we, we see the depth of the pitching staffs. We see that uh, it, if you have one or two good pitchers, that's not enough when you get to this level. Three umpires in the North Half Championship assigned by the state, so no local umpires, uh, which is fair for both teams. And a throw down from the catcher, Wesley Dew, momentarily. Coach Rusty Cagle, like I said, has had a lot of success. Six straight district championships. His second North Half State Championship appearance. Won it last year. Trying to do it for the second consecutive year. And, Al, what do you tell a team? You've been in this position before. I've been in, in the situation as a player, but as a coach, what are you telling your team there, tonight? There's that fine line there because you've got to do all the little things well because at this level, everybody's got talent yeah. and everybody's playing well. And so you've got to do the small things well, but typically the way you do the small things well is you play relaxed. And so I think uh, whoever jumps out on top is a, at a big advantage here. We saw a crazy game uh, the other night of our yeah. own uh, in the first game of the Houston series. They had a wild one here on Monday night to decide that one. Kosciuszko won that game with seven runs and only two base hits. Dylan Gentry plays in the grass, and Ryan Rigby starts Lowell Haney off with a fastball right down the middle for strike one. Haney hitting 330 on the season. If he can get on base, be a great start. Need to put the ball in play here. There's a fastball fouled off the left-hand side. A beautiful ballpark here. Sits right next to the football stadium out in left field. Yeah, Haney's hitting 188 for the playoffs, but he's found ways to get on base. He's uh, had a few walks, and uh, the, the Patriots are much better when they get those first two guys on base. 
No balls and two strikes. Fastball outside. The catcher, Wesley Dew, making sure every pitch is a strike as he frames it. And the third baseman, Gentry, backs even with the bag. Interesting field here. Curveball outside misses. Catcher framed that one up, wanted to get that call. Two balls uh, and two strikes. All grass infield, so looks a lot like AstroTurf, except uh, in the bases area, it's all dirt. Interesting on a field like this. 2-2 two, two pitch, fastball, fouled out of play, and Lowell Haney having a good at first at bat. Yeah, that looks like the cutouts are a little bit extended so that, that mm -hmm. typically you want to get your lead right there at the edge of that grass. If you get a lead at the edge of this grass, you're going to get picked off. Yep, I think so. So plays into the favorite for the home team there, getting that advantage. Fastball drilled inside. Haney turns on it foul. And Lowell Haney right here is doing exactly what you want him to do in that leadoff spot. He's seen every pitch that Gentry, uh, that Rigby has here, and uh, the other guys in the dugout have seen it as well. So they get to be a little bit more prepared for their at-bat based on what Haney does right here. Whether he reaches base or not, he reaches base. That's just an added bonus. So a 2-2 count now. Rigby facing Lowell Haney. Top of the first inning in the North Half State Championship. The 2-2 pitch. Fastball. No, he got him. Punched him out on the outside corner. Haney didn't like the call. Yeah, Michael, looks like we're going to have a, a little bit bigger uh, strike zone on the outside edge of the place. That one may have been off, you know, an inch or two. It was a close pitch. Uh, Tanner Lloyd needs to take note of that. Absolutely. So one out here now in the top of the first inning. And Rudy Martin, a team leading 462, three home runs, 40-plus stolen bases for Rudy. And there's a ball driven out to right field, right to the right fielder, Tim Wade. Rudy hit that ball hard. Right on the button. Rudy's hitting, uh, Rudy's hitting 583 in the playoffs coming in tonight. So he's been a red-hot hitter off a, off a season where he's hit the ball well all year. Al Hunter Wilson, the shortstop for the Patriots with two outs here, the top of the first inning. Yeah, Hunter struggled a little bit in the last round, uh, started to pull the ball a little bit, but he had a good first round to help the team uh, get that first round victory. Curveball, swing and a miss. So he started both the lefties off with fastballs and brought the hook in on Wilson. He chased after it. Yeah, Hunter's kind of a small guy. I think he saw that 305 sign out there and thought, well, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> the 0-1 pitch curveball drilled right to the third baseman Gentry, blocks it up with his chest, throws on to first base, and punched out a 1-2-3 inning for Ryan Rigby and the Whippets. We head to the bottom of the first inning. No score. Tanner Lloyd taking the hill for the Patriots. We'll be back in just a bit. And welcome back to Whippet Field, the kangaroo crossing sign plastered all over the center field fence out there. So Tanner Lloyd will take the mound for Lewisburg, 2.41 ERA, a 6-1 record, 49 innings pitched and 58 strikeouts. Tanner's been...
game one starter in each of the series, playoff series, Allen's got a lot of velocity, a lot of pitches, but he has to throw strikes. He does. Uh, he tends to, to get the big strikeout when he needs it, but also uh, uh, doesn't give in to the hitters uh, and, and as a result has walked a few as well. Rigby will be the leadoff hitter for the Whippets and swing and a miss here. Rigby doesn't have a lot of at-bats, only 20 plate appearances so far in the season. And he's had most of those during the playoffs. I don't know if there's an yep. injury there or, or something. 412 he... batting average, curveball, swing and a miss, and Tanner Lloyd now ahead. But he's been their best hitter during the playoffs, hitting 400 over yep. the five games. So now 0-2 to Rigby. Connor Hill, Ben Hudson do up here in the first. Fastball fouled out of play. You know, one of the keys for Kosciuszko is going to be to, to score those runs when they have the opportunity to get the, uh, get the key hit or the ground ball, run the bases. Uh, they tend to score them one at a time, whereas the Patriots are a little more likely to, to get a couple of runs, put the crooked numbers on the board. 0-2 pitch, good pitch. And Tanner Lloyd able to get the strikeout slider in the dirt. Cody Cooper blocks it up, throws him out at first base. Good start for Tanner Lloyd and the Patriots. You know, the book on the on the, the Whippets is that they like to do a lot of crazy things on the base pass, and I noticed there that as Rigby was running to first, he was a good two or three feet inside of that, of that uh, foul line. Uh, he's got to be in that running box there. Uh, that may be something that Coach Rusty Cagle wants to keep an eye on tonight. Connor Hill, the shortstop, hitting 388. Really, guy leading the team in hitting outside of Rigby with a lot of plate appearances. Tanner Lloyd strikes, starts him off with a strike and then misses there with a fastball inside. One ball, one strike. Connor Hill hitting 267 for the playoffs. Not, again, not a lot of high averages, but they're getting it done through pitching and defense. That pitch outside, two balls and one strike. Coach Jonathan Jones in that third base coach's box. Well, Halfway down the left field is where he's standing. Yeah, when there's no lines painted out there, I guess you can go. There's right a ball there. drilled out to center, but right to Rudy Martin. So almost a copycat of Lewisburg's first inning so far for the Whippets and Kosciuszko as two-hole hitter Connor Hill flies out, lines out really to Rudy Martin. And that ball's hit hard. Uh, Rudy came in and made the play down around his knees. That ball just hung up for the least little while. If that's any indication tonight, uh, players are really going to have to concentrate on getting that ball down on the ground. Ben Hudson, the first baseman, 330 batting average. Hudson is a junior, big lefty. Struggled a little bit in the playoffs, hitting 214, but he has driven in four. Looks at a ball, one down in the dirt. Two outs here, bottom of the first. Fastball, strike one. Caught that outside corner, and Tanner did take note of the a little bit wider strike zone there. That's right. You've got to uh, – every umpire is different as a pitcher. You can't just have in your mind what your strike zone is. You have to throw to his. Fastball drilled out to the shortstop. Busby comes in, fields it, throws it to first. And a 1-2-3 inning for Tanner Lloyd and the Lewisburg Patriots. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. There was one strikeout. And a good first inning so far. Here in the North Half Championship, you don't expect anything less. We'll head to the top of the second inning. Stay with us, folks. Ought to be a fun evening of baseball. Top of the second will go Tanner Lloyd, Cody Cooper, and Mason Givens will be due up for the Patriots here for Coach Rusty Cagle and the 26-7 and seven Lewisburg Patriots out of DeSoto County where 
Three other teams are playing for the north half. And one is assured to go to the state championship game as South Haven and DeSoto Central will have a great best of three series that's, up there in South Haven. That's a nice five-mile drive uh, to play <laughs> yeah. the north half. Hernando, the other team playing for the north half. A rematch uh, from last year's uh, championship, 5A north half championship with New Hope. Tanner Lloyd, seven home runs on the season, also leads the team in RBIs. Stands in with a 280 batting average. Big kid, got a lot of power. And that first pitch was a hanging curveball on the inside. Tanner was uh, tantalized by it, but laid off the first pitch curveball. Which is a good sign. Fastball outside, one ball, one strike. Tanner wants to become a leadoff man here because you got two of the hottest hitters behind him in Cody Cooper and Mason Givens. Chance for a good inning for Lewisburg. The 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Drops down the side and ground ball to Gentry. Fields it, throws it, and got him. That's the first time we've seen that look from Rigby as he dropped down and threw almost submarine style to Tanner Lloyd. Yeah, he's got a nice assortment of pitches, a good fastball that he spots. Not overpowering, but throws it. Uh, Good spots, uh, throws a breaking ball and a change up. And that time, like you said, he dropped down a little bit to the side, showed a different arm angle, and got Tanner Lloyd to ground out to third. Cody Cooper now, 321 Matt and average as the catcher for the Patriots. Looks at a fastball, flies it up down the right field line. Wade gives chase, camps under it, makes the play. And, Michael, that's what the Patriots don't want to do right there is give quick outs. Uh, and allow Rigby to start cruising in this game because he he can go the distance. He has several complete games this year. Uh, They want to make him really work hard, put him in some high-pressure situations with some base runners. Uh, Right now, Lewisburg just looking to get it going, get that first base runner. The sophomore Mason Gibbons now at the plate, the third baseman hitting 367. His third playoff start, third start of the season, really. Actually, no, it's not. He did start earlier in the season for the injured. Hunter Wilson. Yep. And the 1-0 pitch now outside, two balls and no strikes, and it's important that Mason sees a couple of pitches here as Rigby likes to work fast. And you know if anybody on the bench was going to step in for the senior, the injured Gabe Brown, it was going to be Mason as he takes high, ball three. Uh, Mason's just, he's he's that kind of of kid that just doesn't get shaken real easy, ice water. uh, Got got hit in the mouth earlier this year, actually, uh, as he takes a four-pitch walk. Got hit in the mouth down at Cenotopia and got busted up pretty good, and that uh, held him back a little bit. He was getting a good bit of playing time and uh, then had a little set back there, but sees another opportunity right here, and he's taking advantage. Well, he walked there on four straight pitches after Rigby. Had pretty good command of his control. Now, Colt Smith, the free swinger, 284, first baseman. Comes in as a shortstop, came in to talk to Rigby, working out of the stretch for the first time tonight. Curveball, and there's that free loose swing there, Vladimir Guerrero style. Right, and, and you look at him and you think, well, just throw him curveballs, you get him out. But he's hitting 357 for the playoffs. he got some big RBIs, uh, five hits over the course of these five games. And the 0-1 pitch, and that's a ground ball to the shortstop. We'll flip it to second, and the fielder's choice will... Record the third out for Ryan Rigby and the Kosciuszko Whippets. We head to the bottom of the second inning. Did get a runner on. Not able to capitalize. Nothing, nothing. And we'll be back. Al, if uh, innings go like this, it could be a quick night tonight. 
Yeah, we're at 7-18, and we're already in the bottom of the second. A very fast-moving game. Uh, Lewisburg has one base runner, but even then, on a walk, it only took four pitches for Mason Givens to get that walk. Now we'll go to the bottom of the second looking for Tanner Lloyd to hold suit. Dylan Gentry will lead things off at 333, the third baseman. And this is where you want to right face him. You, you want to face him with the bases empty. He's got nine RBIs in, in just five playoff games. So he's a dangerous hitter right now, batting with the bases empty. He is a senior. He looks at ball two there. He'll be followed by Wesley Dew and Austin Parker. Gentry wearing the number one for Kosciuszko. That pitch downstairs, three balls and no strikes. Gentry's one of the few seniors on this team, very much like the Lewisburg squad, very uh, junior-oriented. Uh, looks like they'll be right back again next year, you would think. And he walked him on four straight. Didn't nope. wait for the umpire's call there. The umpire. Uh, he's, probably, he's a senior. He'll probably step back in, say, I'm sorry, my bad, and uh, go back to work here. Well, Kosciuszko giving the home plate umpire. A little bit of business. 3-1 pitch now, and that's a ground ball right off his foot. Tanner Lloyd's going to fill it, throw it, and got him out. And Michael I guess went, it didn't hit his foot. Yeah, evidently not. If, but, but, Michael, we see again that runner taking off down the first baseline, a good two feet inside of that uh, running lane. So you think that's going to come into play tonight? We'll see. You know, that, that's really going to affect the catcher if he steps out to make a throw. When Cody Cooper had to make the throw on the, on the block third strike in the first inning, had plenty of time to step far inside. But when he doesn't have as much time, that's where that could come into play. Wesley Dew now, the catcher, 326 average. That in, inside pitch there on the first pitch. Uh, Kosciuszko is just as willing as Lewisburg to take a pitch. They have reached a number, actually more times than Lewisburg, although I wouldn't have think, thought that was possible, on the hit by pitch. There's a fastball in the outside corner. Evens the count, one ball, one strike here. Bottom of the second inning, one out. Curveball drilled out to right center. Rudy Martin giving chase, makes the catch. And two outs here for Tanner Lloyd. Big righty showing pretty good control tonight, and that's a good sign. And he's working fast, making the best use of his pitches. You know, Tanner, usually in those first couple of innings especially, throws a lot of pitches mm -hmm. going right after the hitters tonight. Austin Parker now, the center fielder, 358, tries to drag bunt, hits it out to Tanner Lloyd. He fields it. Quick throw to first base and in time. A great play there by the first baseman, Colt Smith, coming up the line and making the play. That's right. Had that runner bearing in on him, uh, hung with it, and uh, made the play. I like Austin Parker's thinking there, too. I mean, let's try to see if we can get a runner on. He just got it out in front of him there. Nonetheless, Patriots able to record the 1-2-3 inning for the second straight time. We'll head to the top of the third. No score here in Kosciuszko. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. And welcome back here to Whippet Field, home of the Kosciuszko Whippets. About two hours south of Olive Branch, a little over two hours, depending on who's driving. You know, even at a two-hour drive, uh, you may have a shorter drive than you have a game tonight. We're on pace for about an, uh, an hour and 17-minute <laughs> affair. However, somebody's got to score to win. <laughs> right. Kobe Busby will lead things off for the Patriots. 286 batting average. Second baseman. 
will face Ryan Rigby. That pitch inside. Ball one. Rigby comes inside to Kobe Busby. He is more than willing to take one, leads the team with 10 hit by pitches. You know, those eight and nine guys, uh, he and Chris Taylor have been hit 10 and nine times respectively. There's a ground ball to Gentry. Fields it. Made a great play there to stop it, knock it down. That's a textbook play by the third baseman. Yeah, I I played a little third base in high school, and one of the things they tell you is you don't have to catch the ball. Just a hard hit ball, just block it up. You've still got plenty of time. And that's what we've seen here is he's fumbled a couple of balls, but uh, knocked it down, had a strong throwing arm, and made the play by plenty of time. Well, I played third base in college at Delta State, and my problem wasn't fielding. It was always the throwing. Here's Chris Taylor. Looks at a fastball inside with one out here in the top of the third inning. And we're to that speed part of the Lewisburg lineup now. Very important that these guys set the table for the bats in the middle of the lineup. That pitch outside now. Two balls and no strikes to Chris Taylor. you got four guys in this lineup now, the nine one two three hitters with great speed, above average speed. And that pitch is strike one. These, right guys, the knees. these guys have got to hit the ball on the ground. Uh, Make some things happen. Make that defense speed up. Good crowd by Lewisburg traveling down here tonight. Of course, they're overwhelmed by the Kosciuszko faithful. That ball's driven out to right field, giving chase. His wade's going to be over his head up against the wall. Chris Taylor getting the first hit of the night, and it's a stand-up double. Good start for the Patriots here with one out. In the top of the third, Chris Taylor coming alive. Nice job by Chris there, waiting back, going to the opposite field. The ball is right on the outside part of the plate. Just went with the pitch, drove it over the right fielder's head, and now the the Patriots have two shots with the runner in scoring position and one out. It's a little Haney now at the the plate. Speed at the plate, too, so they're not going to have a lot of time to make decisions out there if Lowell can hit the ball on the ground. Both first baseman and third baseman in. In the grass a little bit. Third base was not going to be able to come in too much as Chris Taylor could swipe the bag with his speed. Haney looks at ball one outside. Rigby having to work out of the stretch again. But Taylor at second base. Got to watch for the pickoff move here. Bad fastball driven right back up the middle. Here comes Chris Taylor. Center fielder is going to try to make a throw, and he can't handle it. And Lowell Haney's going to get to second base on the error. But a good RBI base hit by Lowell Haney, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Yeah, great job by Lowell Haney there. Staying back, going right back up the middle. Didn't try to do too much with it. Center fielder, going to try to make a play at the plate. But again, Michael, there's that speed. Chris Taylor coming around third. He had to speed up a little bit to make that play. Fumbled the ball and gives up, not only gives up the run, uh, didn't have a play at the plate, but gives up the extra base to Lowell Haney. Back-to-back hits for the Patriots. They're up one to nothing now here in the top of the third. Rudy Martin, who hit the ball on a peel last time at the plate now, and Haney's getting a pretty big lead out there at second base. He is. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what he was looking at. That curveball missed outside. Lowell's uh, been picked off a couple of times this year, but, you know, your more aggressive base runners are going to get picked off from time to time. Shortstop Hill giving signals to the pitcher Rigby. That pitch inside, curveball, stretched across the plate, got in there for a strike. One ball, one strike. One out here with Haney at second base. The pitcher in the shortstop really paying a lot of attention to Lowell Haney down there at second base. Second baseman's not even in the picture. He's shaded way over in the hole toward first. Yep. And they've got him picked off. Not sure what happened there. It was Haney. Going on first move, I'm not sure what happened, and he's made a couple of base running mistakes so far in the playoffs. Well, Michael, what you had there was the shortstop was standing at second base with his glove open, the old daylight play, and when the pitcher doesn't make that throw, the base runner sometimes uh, gets lulled to sleep that, hey, he's not going to make the throw, so I'm just going to take third. Uh, But that time, uh, even though the shortstop was standing there for a while, uh, he was able to, to turn and make the play. And Lowell was hung out to dry. He couldn't have gotten back to the base, so he, he did his best to make third. Now base is empty, though. You had a runner in scoring position, two shots to drive him in. Uh, and, again, that's going to be a key for Kosciuszko tonight is keep the Patriots to single runs where the Patriots want to put up some crooked numbers. 2-1 count to Rudy Martin. Drops down again. That pitch misses low. It's three balls and one strike. That pickoff move could become very relevant in later on as we get down the game. So we'll see how that affects the Patriots 
here. 3-1 pitch. Rigby gets his sign and delivers. That's outside. He walked him. So oh. instead of having first and second now, it's just a walk to Rudy Martin. But give him a couple of pitches. He may be standing at second base anyway. Yeah, Rudy didn't do much running in the last series. Uh, no. Did in the first. Uh, he has 40 stolen bases on the year. And uh, did get picked off against South Haven. And I think that kind of cooled his jets just a little bit. But he has fantastic speed. Uh, and look for him to be going here and try to make something happen with two outs, get that runner in the scoring position. 40 stolen bases and 44 attempts. Now Hunter Wilson at the plate. Hunter grounding out to the third baseman his first time up. Hit the ball hard, but a good play by Gentry. Two hits so far for the Patriots here in the top of the third. And on a night where runs are going to be at a premium, uh, base runners on, Hunter Wilson wants to grind out this at bat, give Rudy plenty of a chance to run, and there he goes. And a fastball throw down, not going to be in time. Martin, at world-class speed there. Reason why he's already signed with Texas Tech to play. He's only a junior. Committed to him. Uh, yep. He can't sign I'm sorry. until next Committed. year. Uh, he's got another year with us. That's right. So the first stolen base tonight belongs to Rudy Martin. Now another runner in scoring position. A lot of room on that right side where Hunter Wilson likes to hit the ball. Just a little little uh, ground ball through there will get that run home. Fastball, and he fouled that one back. Looks like Hunter's looking in that direction. Cagle saying, man, that was a fastball. <laughs> Come on, you got to be expecting the fastball is what he's saying. I, yeah, I know Rusty very well. Yeah, I always taught that too, you know, you, you – the best pitch you're able to hit is the hardest fastball. You hit the inside fastball and adjust down to everything else. So Martin at second base. Let me correct that on the score bug there. Top of the third, two outs. Lewisburg up one to nothing. Hunter Wilson at the plate in a 1-1 count. Curveball way upstairs. Just slipped out of Rigby's hand. And it's two and one. Now Hunter's got to be thinking fastball here just the other way. And the home plate umpire is. He's just directing all the players to get back in the dugout. The dugouts are plenty spacious right here. Well, he had some bats outside the dugout too. Good job by the home plate umpire. Player safety there. Two one pitch to Wilson. Fastball up. And Rigby's starting to struggle a little bit with his command. Well, and here's the thing. It's that speed part of the lineup again. He's having a slide step to the plate. He's very quick to the plate. But a lot of times when you do that, that arm just doesn't quite have time to catch up. And that's what we see here is he's missing high. 3-1 pitch. Now Martin at second to Wilson. Pitch down low. He walked him. And the third walk issued by Ryan Rigby. Now that's going to get a visit from the coach. Yep. He's going to go out and talk to his junior right-hander. And, and again, Cagle's going to talk to the right-hander, Tanner Lloyd. And in a, in a tightly contested game like this, you'd like to get that first coaching visit early so if he gets in another tight situation later, uh, the coach has, is limited in what he can do. You don't want to go back to Haney getting picked off at second base. You know, a lot of times Cagle will give the green light to Lowell Haney and Rudy Barton and, and Chris Taylor. He gave it to Gabe Brown, too, before he was Hunter injured. Wilson because of, as well because of their speed, and that may have, you know, that's some a little bit of an inexperience on the base running part of those guys, juniors, and, uh, you know, well, reading as, something into As you go further it. along in the playoffs, too, your margin of error is less and less. So those things that they may have been able to get away with at earlier points in the season, teams are looking for that now. Teams are spending their practice time now with a quick round of batting practice and, and shoring up on things like that. Tanner Lloyd drives one out to left field, but got it off the handle, and the left fielder over street will make the play and end the inning. It was a changeup. Got in on his hands and not able to get under it. Well, Kosciuszko dodged a bullet there. That was a fastball up. Tanner got it just off the hands, a little bit more on the barrel, and we'd be looking at a 4 nothing ball game. So one run off of two hits. Two men left on base. We head to the bottom of the third. Lewisburg on top, one to nothing. We'll be back in just a bit.
Love the music here at the ballpark tonight. Little low rider. ZZ top action. Sun's still out here at Kosciuszko. We're in the bottom of the third inning. As Tim Wade, Nick Frank, and Rivers Dickerson will come to the plate for the Whippets here. Be facing Tanner Lloyd, who's had two, one, two, three innings. Ryan Rigby encountered a little trouble in the top of the third. Let's see if Tanner Lloyd can keep sailing along in the bottom half. Strike one there to Tim Wade, the right fielder. 192 batting average coming into the game. Curveball, swing and a miss. Good pitch there. Got him on the off speed. It's important that Tanner throw those pitches for strikes early in the game. The 0-2 pitch got him. Slider down in the dirt. And Cody's going to throw it down to first. Thought he made the tag. Home plate umpire said no. Great job by the home plate umpire. <laughs> right. They're emphatically telling him safe, giving the safe call. Uh, that allowed Cody Cooper plenty of time to step in and make that play. And that's all you ask from, a, from the umpire on that is to make a quick call so that you know how to react. Great job by Tanner Lloyd on those three pitches. That was textbook. Fastball, curveball, slider in the dirt. Got Tim Wade. Nick Frank now the DH 253 for the big fella. And he looks at a fastball outside. He's one for 11 in the playoffs. Does have three RBIs. Uh, big bat down in the bottom part of the lineup. He is a senior. One ball, no strikes, and one out here. Missing our producer tonight, having to keep up with this. Mia Plumley at home. That pitch outside for strike one. Outside corner. Took a little something off on that, you know, a 2-0 pitch. You know, you, you, you want to make sure you get it over, but you can't just groove a 2-0 fastball in a one nothing game. That pitch fouled off, curveball. Actually, probably a slider up in the zone. Now two balls, two strikes. Doing a dual broadcast up here in Kosciuszko's press box. want to thank those folks for letting us Invade some of their space. Absolutely. Give us a little very, bit of time. Very gracious folks up here. We're going to return the favor tomorrow night. As we'll be broadcasting 7 o'clock game two start at Lewisburg. That pitch fouled off. Fastball. So both teams with a chance to play at home. If there is a game three, it'll be right here. Saturday at Kosciuszko. Not sure of the time yet. Haven't seen a time yet on that, Michael. One of the things that you want to do if you're either one of these teams is to get this series over in two and hope that South series goes three games because, you know, next Wednesday you're right back at it in Jackson. Curveball lifted out into shallow left field. Hunter Wilson camps under it and makes the play. So Tanner Lloyd. We'll face the nine-hole hitter, Rivers Dickerson, with a 314 batting average. Dickerson, the second baseman, we were talking about him when they were when we were doing the national anthem. His uniform is noticeably dirtier than everybody else's. So, kid looks like a player. Reminds me of Lenny Dykstra in his stature. You know, he may be one of those players that if he doesn't get dirty in the game, he gets out there and slides on the field anyway. Well, he lays down a great bunt. Mason Gibbons read it like a charm, fielded it, and made a great throw on the run. Excellent play. Didn't overcommit on that. Stayed back, made a play, and a nice strong throw over to first. And Tanner Lloyd stays perfect through three. No runs, no hits, no errors. One strikeout. We head to the top of the fourth. Patriots leading the Whippets one to nothing here. Kaziesco will be back right after these messages. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot.
Cody Cooper, the catcher for the Patriots, will lead things off here for the Patriots in the top of the fourth inning. Patriots able to get two hits the last inning off of Ryan Rigby and drive it a run. Came off the bat of Lowell Haney after the one-out double by Chris Taylor. So hopefully uh, Patriots can get off to another good start here. Rigby showed signs of a little bit of control problems there in the third. That pitch drilled outside pitch right out to the right fielder. Comes in and makes the play. A good play there. That was dying, and the right fielder almost stayed back too long on that. Looked like it was hit harder than it was and then just just died. Cody Cooper's seen two pitches tonight and has flied out twice. He may want to take one next at bat. Yep, both times to the right fielder. Now Mason Gibbons at the plate. Walked his first time up. Left. Well, no, he actually thrown out in the fielder's choice. One out here, top of the fourth. That pitch upstairs. Mason hadn't seen a strike yet. He hasn't. He's 5-0. and oh. Adjusting the uh, old elbow guard there. See his dad pacing around over there behind the Patriot bench. One ball, no strikes. Curve ball, and there's the one. Yeah, you know, Mason's been hit a, a number of times in different places, and, you know, if there's anybody that's going to get hit in an unorthodox way, it's going to be him. One ball, one strike, one out. Curveball, ground ball to Gentry. Makes the, comes and gets that big hop there and threw him out. We're wearing Gentry out down there. Yeah, great arm over there. A little unorthodox in his delivery from third, but gets rid of it. Uh, it's been a perfect throw right about chest high every time. Four ground balls to Gentry there at third base. He's made every play. Now Colt Smith up with two outs at top of the fourth. Smith hit ground ball to the shortstop his last time up. 284 batting average coming into the game. Colt transfer from New Albany just a year ago. Yeah, his team faced Kosciuszko in the playoffs last year, so this is not his first look at some of these guys. A lot of seniors on that team, though. A lot of guys stepping in for the first time for this Whippet unit. Two balls and no strikes as Ryan Rigby just his uniform out there gets set and the 2-0 pitch outside 3-0 that pitch didn't miss by much you know michael when you're rolling along like tanner lloyd is you uh, a lot of times you want to get that ball back and just go right back to work but it would be very helpful if the uh, patriots can tack on a run or two here new pitcher for and we've been i missed totally missed it but thank you to uh the guys up here in the booth Threet is the new pitcher, junior right-hander in place of Ryan Rigby. So, And that pitch is strike two. He full count now. So don't have a lot with Threet. Yeah, he's three and one on the year. Only been in seven games, all starts. So this is his first relief appearance of the Wonder year. Wonder if Rigby had some arm problems. Curveball, swing, and just fouled it off. Well, you know, we talk about that um, – that, that margin of error, you know, where you may let a pitcher stay a little bit longer uh, when you see control problems like he had last inning, you may go ahead and make that move. We saw Coach Rusty Cagle use three pitchers in the first game in the Houston series, and before the game he said he was going to go all out to win that, whatever it took. Yeah, the spare no expense here in the north half. These teams trying to get down, well, win the series first to get to the state championship. Three curveball down in the dirt. And the catcher, Drew, do, made a great play and threw him out. That was ball four, way in the dirt. Colt Smith fished after it. And three able to come in and get a one, two, three inning. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Lewisburg still on top, one to nothing. We'll be back.
So defensively four, well, I guess uh, offensively two. So there was a defensive change there for Kosciuszko in the fourth inning. Brody Threet, Threet came in the top of the fourth. And Rigby just moved to right field, replacing Wade. Right, so Wade out in the lineup, and Rigby now at the plate will face Tanner Lloyd. So Brody Threet, the new pitcher for the Whippets. And, you know, and he's going to be hitting in Tim Wade's spot there in the seven hole. And Rigby fouled that pitch off. Oh, ball, no balls and two strikes. Tanner Lloyd trying to work quick here. Quick change by the Whippets coach. Uh, but in the playoffs, you know, especially in a three-game series, it's huge to win on the road. And he feels like he's got a hold serve at home. Curveball lifted out in the shallow left. Hunter Wilson, come on, man. He, Hunter Wilson had called it off, and Lowell Haney ran right into his back. You know, Michael, I noticed that on the last one, that Lowell didn't peel off quite quick enough when uh, when Hunter caught the one last in, and it cost him here just a lack of communication. So that will be scored as an E6 with an assist to Lowell Haney. <laughs> well, Actually, that's, that's the left fielder's ball all the way. If he can make the play. He needs to, well, the if, shortstop needs to run out. But if the shortstop has backed up and called it off, camped under it, and the left fielder's still moving, you want him, you want Hunter Wilson to go ahead and make that play. He's been playing shortstop all year, although Lowell Haney's played in left before. He's just been out there for the last couple of games since the injury to Gabe Brown. You know, not really a lot of action in left field all year long for the Patriots. Uh, if you look at the, the stats for Rudy Martin and for Chris Taylor, they've got – Many, many more uh, putouts than our left fielders do. So runner at first reached on an error. Tanner Lloyd having to work out of the stretch for the first time here in the bottom of the fourth. And there goes the runner, and that's a foul, ground ball foul. So the hit and run was on now. No balls and two strikes to Connor Hill. The shortstop flew out to center field, hit the ball hard his last time up. Yep. Rigby, to do for Rigby has four stolen bases on the year. All four of those came in the game three against Tishomingo County. So we'll try to get a little bit more story around him. Pick off. Not in time. So there it is. Defensive change for the Patriots. Creating an error in left field. The 0-2 pitch. Tanner, nice job there by the hitter, Connor Hill, calling timeout as Tanner Lloyd and Ryan Rigby playing cat and mouse. Yeah, nice job by Tanner there. Uh, the the uh, Kosciuszko runners like to try to draw the balk, and he gave a twitch towards second base that time. Tanner working a lot faster right there. He noticeably slows his pace down when there are runners on. Uh, he's been getting the ball very Colt Smith-like, uh, mm -hmm. grabbing the ball, getting a sign, and going straight to the plate. Now changing up his looks, uh, giving him uh, you know, a long look, short look, uh, not letting him get into any kind of groove on the bases. No balls, two strikes, the runner doesn't go. Cody Cooper's going to try to throw down, not in time. And that pitch just missed, one ball and two strikes. So Cody Cooper with a strong arm behind the plate. Be curious to see if uh, they send Rigby. 1-2, got him picked off. And Colt Smith will fire it down. Nobody there to back up first base. And Colt Smith and Ryan Rigby are going to chase each other down. Now they're going to give it to Busby. He's going to try to make the play, and he flips it to Hunter Wilson. Nice, so nice job by the Patriots there. You, you want to get that in two throws. No other runners on base, though. They didn't have anybody else to worry about. And so they took their time, made him commit full speed every time, tried to dance around and, and draw a throw. They made him commit full speed before making each throw and get an easy tag out. Going back toward the base. You always, wanna, uh, you always want the least margin of error to be at the base he came from and not the base he's going to. Great move by Tanner Lloyd. Pick him off, Al. And uh, now the umpires are going to check the count. It is one ball and two strikes. But a big base running mistake. So, on Kosciuszko's so, out. So now it's as if that error never happened. Right. One ball and two strikes to 
Connor Hill. He looks at that pitch upstairs. That was a slider, I think. Looked like it. And you kept know, it up. Uh, it's as if that never that error never happened as far as the inning goes. But I guarantee you, uh, uh, Lowell Haney, Hunter Wilson, and Coach Rusty Cagle still know that it happened. That one fouled off of the Kosciuszko dugout and out of play. They gave chase over here, just, just ran out of room. Evidently a nice play by a fan over there. Well, I'll tell you what, a great little setup here right uh, next to home plate on the left side. And you got a little hill all the way around, so you've yeah. got room for, for people to still be able to see, get a great vantage point to watch the ball game from. A lot of folks in the, the softball fields just up the hill to our right. People standing over there, and a big strike out there from Tanner Lloyd. The slider got him swinging out in the outside dirt there, and the second out recorded. The third strikeout for Tanner Lloyd in two outs here, bottom of the fourth. Excellent job of just going right back after the hitters by Tanner Lloyd there. Ben Hudson now, the first baseman, stands in. He grounded out to Kobe Busby in the first. Ball one. And Tanner's picked the pace right back up again, get the ball as soon as the hitter steps in. He's ready to go. That pitch downstairs, two balls and no strikes. You know, I think that's about three times now he's gone 2-0. and oh. Has that look about him, though. Gets right back on, unfazed by it, goes right back after the hitter. And that's three times he's thrown a strike on 2-0. and oh. Well, he blew it right by him then. And Hudson looking for something down the middle there. Uh, good fastball, but on the outside part of the plate. Two balls and one strike. Two outs. That ball drilled out in the center field. Rudy Martin, I think he lost it in the lights, able to stay with it and make the play. A hard hit ball there by Ben Hudson, but another one, two, three inning. Well, kind of, sort of. We'll be back in the fifth. Coming up, Patriots winning one to nothing. Well, that sun finally starting to set, Al. Back off to the west, which is kind of in center field here. And we talked about earlier at the, at the top of the broadcast, cozy little ballpark here. You've got a lot of room uh, around the backstop. You know, that, that's pretty much standard now. But down the lines, it's really tight. Uh, as, the, as the lights take effect here, you get a, a nice look, nice cozy little ballpark sitting down in a hole. So Kobe Busby will lead things off. That ball drilled. First pitch right down the line. It's going to be at least two. And uh, the outfielder is going to raise his hand as that ball went out of play, I guess, down the line and lead off. Stand-up double. Well, you couldn't have drawn this the start to this inning up any better. Rip down the line by Kobe Busby. Had a double down the right field line in the last series. That was a big RBI double. This one in leadoff fashion. Kobe doesn't have great speed out there, but you got great speed behind him. You got an opportunity to score him without the benefit of a base hit right here. If Chris can get a bunt down, uh, Chris Taylor as he stands in, if he can get that bunt down and move Busby over to third, they'll have an excellent chance of getting that run in with the top of the lineup. Huge double by the eight and nine hitters. Now Chris Taylor 
coming up. He is looks like he was going to try to bunt it. It was a curveball, and uh, he kind of said, no, yeah, and then fouled it off. So down in the count, no balls and one strike. Looks like he may have uh, had one attempt to, uh, to try to bunt for a base hit. Again, he has great speed. Uh, this one probably is going to be more of the sacrifice variety where he doesn't worry at all about getting on base. We saw Chris do that in the last series, tried to push one a little bit too hard early yep. on, had another opportunity in the, in the following game and got it down. Busby with a slight lead at second base. Three looks back, and Taylor is going to bunt. Puts this one Excellent. down. That's a beauty. That could be a base hit with his speed, and it is. And now we have runners at first and third back-to-back -back hits. Chris Taylor two for two in the game. And now here's where you where you start looking for that crooked number. Uh, you still the goal right here is to get that runner in from third. Uh, even a double play ball right now gets him in. But with Haney's speed, with Rudy Martin's speed, with Hunter Wilson's speed, you got an opportunity to really break it open right here on the road. And you got to take these opportunities when you can get them. Coach Jonathan Jones on a dead sprint from the Whippet dugout to talk to his junior right-hander three. I'm assuming it was about the bunt coverage there, but he was, uh, I tell you what, I, I, I bet you he's probably getting onto his pitcher for not covering third base because Gentry made a fake throw and could have pulled Busby off. Now Lowell Haney stands to the plate. He had an RBI single his last at bat. Patriots threatening here. No outs here, top of the fifth. Taylor at first and Busby at third. Back-to-back -back hits. They're trying to pick off. And you go back base. to that last play. Busby did take a very aggressive turn around third base, but it was because nobody was there. Nobody was covering. If he had made that throw, Kobe's not going to try to score on that. Right. Uh, but if the ball gets away even a little bit, yeah, he was far enough down the line where he could have scored. Taylor standing at first with a small lead. Busby similar lead at third. Three looks on both back. Taylor goes back to first as three tries to stay ahead of the base runners here. And this may be a, a great opportunity to swipe second base here because you don't want to give up that second run, not the way Tanner Lloyd is throwing tonight. I don't think a bad, uh, you know, a bunt is bad in this situation. Kind of a safety type of bunt. Yeah, the only thing about the bunt here is you have a left-handed batter. And so the, the pitcher's got a good look at the runner coming down third. The uh, the catcher has a good look at him. If he pitches out, the ball's out at, at all, uh, he's just a dead duck there. With nobody out, you don't want to take that chance. I've seen t uh, Coach Rusty Cagle put a hit and run on here. Coach Shaker Turner in the first base box looking on. 1-0 count and a throw over to first. Trying to keep the runner yeah, the worst thing you can have happen here is for the runner to go and be a line drive right to somebody, and then you've got two outs with the runner on third. With Lowell Haney's speed, if he hits the ball on the ground anywhere but the third baseman or the pitcher, that run's going to score. Uh, Busby's getting an aggressive secondary lead coming down that line, and they've got to be really quick to throw out Haney at first. Right. 1-0 pitch, curveball upstairs, 2-0. He can't afford to walk him. A Brody, 3 a very dangerous Trying to get out of this on one. deck. He already has one base hit tonight. Had a three-run homer Saturday against Houston. A big one. Unfortunately, the Patriots lost game two, forced a game three. Able to win it Monday night, eight to four. Throw over again. And the Patriots have Chris done Taylor. tonight what they didn't do on Saturday. They didn't lock it down, and, and they, gave, right. they gave some some free outs out there, offensively and defensively. We've seen that, you know, we've we've done that uh, on both sides tonight, but so far have been able to work around that. Only manufacture one run, though, so need to add to it right here. 2-0 pitch, fastball, strike one. That was an excellent take right there by Lowell Haney. Uh, pitcher's pitch right on the outside black. And uh, up in the count, he wants to let that one go and look for something a little bit better. Home plate umpire looked like he swallowed a bug or something. <laughs> Doesn't look like it's very tasty either, Michael. <laughs> He's wondering, where do you get these guys from? <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, they don't have those wherever he calls them. He games. said he ate a gnat. <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody on either side is running any water out there either. <laughs> Haney calls timeout. Looks down at Coach Cagle giving a flurry of signals down there in the third base coach's box. You know, earlier in the season, that may be a funny moment for both sides, but both of them are so locked in right now. The Patriots with an opportunity to break this game open. Kosciuszko wanting to avoid that. They're really keyed in on this situation. 
First and third, pick off to first, not in time. So he's really worried about the runner at first base, and he should be. Taylor's got a lot of speed. Haney. Stands in with a 2-1 count. one nothing Patriot lead, top of the fifth. Threatening here. Fastball, swing and a miss. Good pitch. Wow. Looked like he took a little something off of that. Uh, got, um, got Lowell Haney out a little bit in front of that. It's cat and mouse right here. Great high school baseball here. 2-2 uh, two -two count, nobody out. First and third for the Patriots. Two balls, two strikes to Haney. Three looks over and throws it to first base. Expecting Taylor to go. He doesn't. Taylor doing a nice job at first base. Doesn't need to get a big lead. He swipes second base. Busby stands at third. Nobody out here, top of the fifth. 2-2 two -two pitch on the way. Fastball down in the dirt. A nice block by the catcher. Taylor thought Wesley about going Dew. on that. Uh, it was, was, not, was right about at the edge of the dirt there. Uh, didn't want to give up a free out. Now with a full count, let's see if Coach Cagle puts him in motion. Full count here, no outs. Haney and Threat battling each other here. And a throw over to first base, trying to catch him napping. The longest inning so far. Absolutely. I or think at we've least taken half longer inning. in this half inning than we have in the first few innings combined. So important here. This is when it all counts. Three throws. Pinch upstairs. He walked him. Taylor was on the move, though. And just like we talked about, he wasn't even thinking about second base. If that was a strikeout, he was looking to throw the ball to third, not to second. Now the leading hitter for the Patriots, the center fielder Rudy Martin stands in. He's flying out a hard line out to right field and walked his last at bat. Now stands in, bases loaded, nobody out, and three's going to go to the windup. You know, Houston chose to walk uh, Rudy Martin in key situations. I, Can't I do that, that here. Kosciuszko wishes they had that luxury <laughs> here. Three down of the windup. Corners in. That pitch inside for strike one. Good pitch there. Wow, it looked like that was a little up and in. You can bet Rudy Martin won't let that go by again. A lot of room right down the first baseline. The first baseman playing way over, almost uh, even beyond the cutout. Well, he's also in the grass as well. And curveball driven out to left field. Could, is it deep enough to get Busby in? We'll see. There goes Busby, and here comes the throw home. And it's not going to be in time, and the runners move up. Uh, excellent job by the trail runners moving up there because now you've got a situation. Uh, if they cut that, they're going to appeal to third. And he left early. He left Michael. early, and uh, Coach Cagle not happy, but uh, the coach, Jonathan John. Jones, rather, the head baseball coach for Kosciuszko, he looked right away, and I thought Busby left a little early, too. It, it was borderline, uh, but, yeah, he's trying to get – it was a short fly ball. Uh, it's not one that he had the luxury of just, just uh, trotting in and uh, trying to get that little head start, and it caught What him. a huge turn of events. Now there's two outs, and home plate umpire calls timeout. Cagle – Really not arguing that much, but I tell you what, Jonathan Jones came right out of the dugout and told his catcher to throw it at third base because he knew he left early too. Busby. Well, you've got to at least try that because uh, otherwise you're sure. looking at you a 2 nothing nothing to lose. deficit. Runners on second and third, still nobody out with the heart of the lineup up. So runners second and third and now two outs after one ball put in play. Three now facing Wilson. Runners at second and third and he fouled a first pitch curveball. Right back. Yeah, I was up in his eyes. We've seen a lot of curveballs up, and I, I can't help but believe that uh, the Patriots are going to make them pay for that at some point. Wow. Man, oh, man. No balls and one strike to Hunter Wilson. Runners at second and third, and that pitch in the dirt. And a good block by the catcher, Wesley Dew, saving a run. Hmm. 
a base hit right here would go a long way toward the Patriots having a little breathing room the way Tanner Lloyd's throwing tonight. He's well, not going to need much, but you'd like to have more than one. Trying to keep the momentum. The 1-1 pitch curveball inside. Just about nope. hit him and broke over for a strike. Strike two called. And Brody three is thankful for another base running mistake if he can get out of this one. One ball, two strikes to the shortstop, Hunter Wilson, two outs. And the pitch fastball down low. Deuces wild. Two on, two out. Two, Number two, two at the, the plate. Key situation for Hunter Wilson. He's been there many times throughout the year, delivered a number of two out base hits. Got to look for the curveball here. Yep, and there comes the ball. Gets behind Dew. He can't make the play, and there's a run. And now Lowell Haney, smartly Lowell Haney, goes back to third. He thought about trying to score there, and that's a big run for Lewisburg on a pass ball. A good pitch, really, by Brody Three, and Dew couldn't just, handle it. Just, just got, got up under. under. Yep, sure did. He made a, try to make a nice play on that. And, you know, as a, for the Patriots, they've put a lot of pressure on and, and eventually get the run in. Uh, you'd like to see it done in a little bit more baseball-worthy fashion where you get the base hit or whether you get the sacrifice fly. Uh, but they'll take it any way they can get it. Full count now to Hunter Wilson, who's had a pretty good at bat so far. Lowell Haney now at third base. Two to nothing, Lewisburg. And the 3-2 pitch. Fastball, swung and missed. Patriots do escape with one run. Brody Three doing a nice job getting out of a big-time hole. We'll see how that will affect the Kosciuszko hitters, but they're down two. Patriots up in this one. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Well, Kosciuszko coming to the bat here, bottom of the fifth inning. Live from Kosciuszko, Mississippi, play on sports.com, bringing you the broadcast. Sponsored by Homer, Skelton Hyundai, and Olive Branch, Tanner Lloyd. Pitching a gem of a game so far for the Patriots. He'll face Dylan Gentry, Wesley Dew, and Austin Parker. Yeah, Tanner has faced the minimum through four innings. Uh, did allow one base runner on, a, on an error, on a pop-up that uh, mishandled by Hunter Wilson as Lowell Haney came in uh, behind him, uh, but quickly erased on a pickoff. So he has faced the minimum through four as he faced a cleanup hitter, Dustin Gentry, this inning. And there's a ground ball right back to Tanner on a 2-0 pitch and a quick out here in the bottom of the fifth. Great job trying to throw strikes like you said, 2-0 pitch. He got behind in the count, came back with a strike. Gentry hit it right back to him. You know, Tanner was standing on deck as, as the events unfolded during Hunter Wilson's at bat as the Patriots do finally pick up that insurance run. Wow. And, uh, you know, Tanner's got to be breathing a little bit better knowing that he's got a two-run cushion. Strike one called there as Wesley do look to drag bunt. <laughs> Oh, I just get tickled watching some of these things. Mason Gibbons made a great play earlier in the game off the nine-hole hitter trying to drag bunt. And Wesley Dude now down in the count. No balls, two strikes as yep. he fouled that one out of play. Tanner hung that breaking ball a little bit, got away with it. Do you saw that? His uh, eyes got big there, but just a little bit late pulling the trigger. 
He'd love to have that pitch again. Dues the catcher for the Whippets. There's a curveball lifted into a base hit in the center field in the first hit for the Whippets. Comes off the bat of the catcher, Junior Wesley Dew. And a first base runner for. And we're going to see the second base runner. runner. Yeah, yeah, first base hit for the Whippets. Number 24, that'll be Jamal Hull, a sophomore. Pitch running. Runner at first, one out. As Austin Parker stands in, a center fielder, and that's going to be a base hit to right field, past the diving Busby. And Chris Taylor's going to try. Oh, man, he threw it in a dugout. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Chris has got a great throwing arm, uh, but a lot of time the adrenaline of a close game like that, he had a shot at him. Uh, the adrenaline of a close game like this, ball sails into the dugout. Now you're looking at runner at third, one out, and the Whippets with a chance to tie without the benefit of a base hit. Yeah, Chris got under that one and threw it in the dugout, and one run scores, and a runner moves all the way to third base. Back-to-back base hits. And that was just one a out. CNI base hit, just a slow ground ball that it was just hit in the right place. So tie and run 90 feet away as – Brody Threep now comes to the plate for the Whippets here to try to tie it up, help his own cause here. And he's a 216 hitter on the year, hitting 333 in the playoffs. So you got to be expecting a bunt here. Yeah, one for three. Yeah, absolutely be awake on the bunt. And you notice the, the runner takes an unorthodox lead at third here, lining up actually even with the bag, and he'll sprint down that line. Pitch upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Tanner throwing a pretty good game up until the back-to-back hits here. One out. Runner at third. This Tanner. is where he wants to strike out. He got bases open. Fastball fouled off. He's picking up some speed on that fastball. Yeah, going right after him. Is, uh, the thing I'm noticing, though, he's up in the zone a little bit. The further you go into a game, uh, the tighter a pitcher gets, the more he ha- uh, tends to leave it up, and those are hittable pitches. Brody able to get out of that last inning. Runners at first and... No bases loaded, nobody out. I'm sorry. Runners at, yeah, bases loaded, nobody out. Two hits now for the Whippets here in the bottom of the fifth. And there he goes. Tried to bunt it and fouled it off and got the hand of Cody Cooper. That's a throwing hand, too. He's going to walk around. He's been banged up a little bit. He's already asking for the ball. But uh, Excellent job. The umpire already taking a little time, going and getting a baseball from the home dugout, giving Coach Cagle time to go check on his junior catcher. Appears to be okay. Got to be tough here with a runner 90 feet away. Cody had a little bit of a struggle Monday night. Yeah, it looks like now, though, with with, uh, two strikes, you wonder – if Kosciuszko will go with the squeeze here with two strikes. They may. One out here. And they're not. Curveball drilled right to the third base and Gibbons. Looks the runner. And we've got a foul ball. No, they called a balk. They called a balk on the pitcher, Tanner Lloyd. And that's the first time that's been called on him all year. Wow. Not sure what happened there. That's huge. So a balk. Plates the second run for Kosciuszko, and it's a tied game, 2-2. Two to two. That was big, too, because that was right to Mason Givens. Looked him back. All he had to do was make a throw, and we had a runner at second with two outs. Find out what you're made of on the road, don't you, Michael? That's right. 2-2 two to two the score now. Those base hits and the throwing error. Have been costly. One ball, two strikes now. And that pitch misses. So Brody didn't have to do much. 
And here's, here's where you want to see the Patriots regain their composure. We see Cody Cooper sails one over the pitcher's head there on the return throw. You want to regain your composure. It's a tie ball game now. You want to get out of this inning and go right back to work with the bats. And he got him. No, he said he didn't go. Yeah, Good job the by the home plate umpire. Quick call by the first base umpire. Obviously, he's paying attention. Full count now to Brody Three. One out here. Bottom of the fifth. Fastball fouled it off. Great at bat here by the that pitcher. Looked like, looked like he had just enough on that one to be able to flick it off to the right side. I'm trying to flick bugs that are coming in here. <laughs> I threw it outside. Hope it didn't land on a fan down there. And I'm sure they're getting bombarded with them anyway. The 3-2 pitch. Fastball. He walked him. Now the go-ahead run reaches. And the leading RBI man for the whip that's coming to the plate and Nick Frank, the senior. And another pinch runner for the pitcher will be number five, Kelvin Riley, a junior. So we'll see what the DH can do here. How big was that last inning? For Brody Threat and the Whippets getting out of a bases loaded, no out jam, only giving up one run. And this, that this was a courtesy pass runner ball. has stolen 10 bases in 13 attempts. See if they want to employ the running game. See what the Patriots are made of here. As Kosciuszko teams likes to rattle their opponents, especially on the bases, uh, did get the big bulk right there. And so we'll see how Lewisburg responds. I know they spent a lot of time in practice yesterday going over such situations. Nick's going to try to bunt it, and he bunted it foul. So now you just look at the physical stature. You don't think this is a guy that's, uh, uh, that's going to bunt. Gibbons coming in with a speedy runner at first base. If the – and I think what Jonathan Jones saw there is if I can get a bunt down, I may get a runner to third base. Yeah, the runner at first has to beat that out, though, for that to really be a big deal, unless, of course, he gets another ball. Uh, but you're at one out now. If he throws a runner out at first, the runner would be at third with two outs. It's the bunt and run. We still don't know what the balk was. All we know is it was called with a runner at third. Now, there goes the runner, fouled off, a hit and run on. Now at 0-2, you've got an opportunity to pitch out, to pitch up, a, a number of things to give your catcher a, sure. an opportunity to throw him out. Uh, Lewisburg would love to have the old strike him out, throw him out, double play right here, get out of this inning, and start fresh in the top of the sixth. Nick Frank, the DH, an 0-2 deficit, swing and a miss, a big strike out there. Nice slider right there from Tanner. He's left that pitch up a little bit, gets it down right here, though, and uh, Frank swings through it. And now Rivers Dickerson, the second baseman, trying to reach on a drag bunt. Gibbons threw him out. Now two outs. Runner at first base. Thank you for joining us tonight here live from Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Now three-game series. Uh, even though uh, down uh, right behind the plate, they've got T-I-N-T which is there is no tomorrow. There actually will be a tomorrow, tomorrow night at Lewisburg, and that will be a lose or go home game for one of these teams. Battling it out tonight at 2-2. You know, the, uh, the Whippets won their last game on only two base hits. They have two already here tonight, but they put them in the right spot back-to-back -back and uh, caused some damage on the bases. Pinch runner gets his lead. There he goes. First pinch, and that is going to be catcher, catcher interference. Catcher. Cody Cooper stuck his hand out there to try to throw the runner out, and the batter swung. Yeah, really late swing there, protecting his his uh, runner, and uh, Cody Cooper got caught reaching a little bit. So the third error in this inning for the Patriot, or the second error and the third in the game for the Patriots. Now top of the order. And now we face their leadoff man and hottest hitter, Ryan Rigby. Two on, two out. And the tension builds here in Kosciuszko, Michael. Yes, it does. Ryan Rigby, 0 for 2 in the game so far. Struck out in the first. Reached on an error. Fly ball in the third. And then he was picked off. 
Tanner Lloyd. There's a curveball off the end of the bat. Evens the count. One ball and one strike into the Patriot dugout. And again, he left that one up a little bit. Uh, so far, these whippet hitters have not been able to do a lot of damage with that that high fastball, or even sometimes the, the slider that hangs up a little bit high, fouled a lot of balls off to the right side off the end of the bat. You can tell they're, they're pulling off of it just a little bit. One ball, one strike to Ryan Rigby. Daylight play on. And the pitch, strike two on the outside corner. Not sure why we're really worried about the runner at second base as much with two outs here. Well, in a 2-2 game and late inning situation, you want to keep him as close as you can so if they do get a base hit, you got a shot at him at the plate. If you just let him go, that run scores, and you're looking at a really big inning at that point. But both Busby and Wilson trying to hold him on. There's a pitch inside off the Kosciuszko dugout. You know, for everything you do, though, to try to hold a runner on, uh, try to keep that run closer, you give up a little something, and in these type situations, you never know which is gonna pay off. You know, you, you make a choice to either play the shortstop over uh, for a position for a ground ball. I or mean, Gibbons is basically a foot off the line at third base, and there's a huge hole, because Wilson's trying to hold a runner on, there he goes, throw down, not going to be in time. Slid under the tag. Gibbons making a nice stop. And now a 2-2 count. Runners at first and third. And with runners on first and third here, you can, you can almost be assured that uh, that runner on first is going to take off, try to make something happen here, try to get a free run here. The best thing Tanner Lloyd can do is throw, throw the ball through Ryan Rigby's back exactly. for strike three and go to the dugout. Yeah, that's right. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, runners at first and third. And that's what Tanner did. He's Absolutely. Good job there, Tanner. Great job there on the curveball. Struck him out. He didn't even phase when the runner took off. Yeah, what they're trying to accomplish there is to get him to step off or get him to twitch, to, to balk or something, and allow that run to, to come home, to steal a run there, if you will. But Tanner Lloyd gets the strikeout, keeps his composure, and we go to the, to the top of the sixth. Now, it's a two-inning game, Michael. We're all tied up. Two runs on two hits. There were two Lewisburg errors, two men left on base, two strikeouts for the big fella, one walk. We got a brand new ball game heading to the sixth. Stay with us, folks. This is going to be a barn burner. We'll be back in just a bit. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. So Tanner Lloyd will come to the plate tonight in the top of the sixth. 0 for 2 in the game so far. Grounded out to third, flew out to left. You know, in that last at bat, he got a high fastball, just caught it off the handle, hit a hit a uh, deep fly ball to left field. He'd love to have that, that pitch again. Curve ball downstairs, Brody Threat. Still in the game. Came in in the third inning for Ryan Rigby, who threw three innings, gave up two hits, one run, one earn run, three walks, and one strikeout. Rigby's been their most dominant pitcher. Don't be surprised to see him if we go to game three in this mm -hmm. series. Curveball, big swing for a strike. Coach Cagle not happy. Big fella loves to look at that. Yeah, he's got to uh, play – Play the role of leadoff man here. Get on base. Uh, let one of the speedier guys run for him. Curveball in the dirt. And Tanner hadn't seen a fastball from three yet. Two balls and one strike. 
here in the top of the sixth in a 2-2 tied game. Patriots scored one in the third and one last inning in the fifth. Kosciuszko two in the bottom half of the fifth inning. There's a ball driven down the line. It's up, and it is out of here. No, it's off the wall. And Tanner Lloyd will have a stand-up double. I thought it was out of here. It looked like it. Um, Man, he hit that ball hard. Must have hit the top of the wall and died. And now a pinch runner for Tanner with the leadoff double. That's going to be Tucker Womack, a sophomore. He spent a lot of time as a, a, the Patriots have had some difficulties with their courtesy runners this year. Tucker got a lot of experience last year as a runner and uh, has been one of their more dependable runners. He's at second base with nobody out. Just like the Patriots started last inning, uh, you know, ended up loading the bases, had the, the, the leaving early on the fly ball that cost oh, him. Oh, yeah. Let's see how they can respond right here. Cody Cooper, big RBI man. He's only seen two pitches tonight. It's flied out twice. I'd like to see him lay it down. That's exactly what's going to happen. Tucker Womack with a lot of speed at second base, as you mentioned. Cody Cooper in an opportunity here to move the runner over. And I like Coach Cagle doing one ball and no strikes. A lot of speed at the plate, or not a not a lot of speed at the plate, and so Cody's just going to be looking to get this ball down. Uh, needs to get it down the third base right line here. is what he needs to do. Is the first baseman creeps in, the second baseman basically playing first base. Has three. Tucker doing a great job down there at second, knowing that the the play may be on. They're going to try to keep him close, and any ball bunted hard at the first baseman or the pitcher, they're going to try to get that out at third. So they're willing to give up the middle of the field. If Cooper swings here, but he's going to be bunting, and he tried to pop at it instead of catch it and fouled it back. <laughs> Cagle's shaking his head. Okay, uh, so maybe not. Maybe Always maybe. an interesting <laughs> thing in the playoffs where you, you, uh, you're asking your RBI guys in the middle of the lineup to lay one down because a lot of these guys throughout the regular season, that's not their role. That's why they're in the middle of the lineup because they can drive the ball. But Coach Cagle worked on it in practice for hours and hours over the last two weeks because he knew that these situations were going to happen. One ball, one strike to Cody Cooper. Going to let him swing away, and he looks at ball two. You know, Cody, Two balls and one strike, and now the first baseman takes a couple of steps back. Yeah, if he knew how well Cody hit the ball in the opposite field, uh, he would be trembling a little bit right now. Right. He hits the ball very hard up the middle, uh, right center field area. We've seen him hit a number of uh, balls deep to center field. And that would parts. be a good time. Tucker with a safe lead at second base. And the pitch, fastball, driven foul. He hit that ball a long Cody, way. Way but, out in front of that one, but yep. he was right on it. Two balls and two strikes now to Cody Cooper. Cody's a good two-strike hitter. He's got to get it done right here, though. Uh, when you fail to get down the bunt, you've got, you've, got to make, you've got to hit a deep fly ball or ground ball on the right side. Tons of room over on the right side. Now they adjust to normal position. Sure. Two balls and two strikes now. Nobody out. Tanner Lloyd with the leadoff double. Tucker Womack in the run for him. Curveball, that pitch in the dirt, and the home plate umpire. He wanted he wanted to ring it up, but he didn't yeah, make a good call. Excellent job. Got a good look at it. That ball just fell off the table. It yep. looked to me like it was a strike and then just well, right at the plate. I think Cody Cooper was thinking the same thing. <laughs> he was. He was glad to see that ball hit the dirt right in front of the catcher's mid. If he had been able to, to pick that out of the dirt without, without it hitting. 3-2 pitch. He walked him inside, and that curveball got away from him there. Almost hit him. Now runners at first and second, nobody that, out. That's not a bad walk at all there. It sets up a force at any bag. Right. Uh, Mason Givens not with a lot of speed. You've got two inexperienced runners now. you got Jonas White coming on to run at first. He had, he's had his adventures on the bases this year. I've yeah. had the other courtesy runners. But those two guys have had a lot of pinch running uh, experience this season. Tucker Womack in his second season of pinch running. But you're right, we've had our uh, ups and downs with pinch runners. So Jonas White in now at first base, runners at first and second, nobody out, and the third baseman, Mason Gibbons, a hot third baseman. And now at you're, the plate. you're going to ask a guy who hasn't been in the lineup very much. Well, maybe they're well, not going to ask him to bunt. And well, that's a Taylor no, Wade. It's, no, it's not because the second baseman was keeping the bunt. And Mason Gibbons doing a nice job putting it in play, moving him over just like a bunt. You really expect him to be bunting right there, but it does the job uh, because Kosciuszko really handed that to the to Lewisburg more than anything right. else. But the second baseman having to play over for the bunt, uh, couldn't cover second. Now we're looking at second and third, one out. And, again, in the playoffs, you've got to get that run home with less than two outs. 
uh, the free swinging Colt Smith at the plate trying to get it done. Yep. Tucker Womack at the plate or at third base. Maybe a safety squeeze here with the pitcher coming out of the windup. I think you're probably going to see Colt swing away here. Hits the ball hard. Uh, you know, he's typically a straight pull hitter. Have seen him go to the right side in this situation and get that run home. Curveball driven out in the left center field. That's going to be one run. Jonas White standing on second base. He may not be able to score. He was heading back to the bag when the ball was in the for sure gap, and Coach Cagle's letting him have it. Well, and you, you've got to – you got to get a little bit better jump than that because he, you know, he did right to go back to the base at the beginning, deep fly ball, but he's got to read quicker that that ball is down. The other runner, uh, Tucker Womack at third, was halfway down the line. As the runner on third, you're there tagging no matter how far away the ball seems to be because you can just you can cruise in. Uh, if the ball is caught, there's no way he has a chance to get back, though. So both runners doing opposite of what they should have done. And, again, the inexperience or the uh, – I'm not sure it's inexperience at this point. Uh, but just a lack of uh, getting it done out there. Well, on the it's bases. situational, uh, Al. It's situational. You know, as a runner at second base, and we've been taught this from time and time, when a ball's hit and the outfielders are on the run, you're going halfway to look at it. If you can, you can almost creep to second base and be facing the, the outfield wall to see what's going to happen. Clearly, neither one of those guys were going to make the catch. Cole right. hit that ball on the line right in the gap, and Jonas is heading – directly back to second base on a full speed dead run not sure why i guess he was expecting the catch and a tag up nonetheless colt smith doing an unbelievable job you know, it, in a it, situation it, to drive funny. in the you third get run. your rbi guys up and and the patriots have done this all year long you get your key rbi guys up runner on third less than two outs and they have struggled all year long yep. getting that run in mm-hmm. you get colt smith probably the guy you least want up there the guy with the least back control control on the team but he does an excellent job in this situation michael it wasn't just this one time year all year long he's hit the ground ball of the second baseman the fly ball of the outfield in that lower part of the lineup getting it done uh finally getting some production from the middle part uh that the um uh, that the patriots didn't get in the last round getting that production getting it on and getting on base getting this started and now we've got an opportunity to to punch a right. hole in this game Brody Threat is out of the game for the whippets of Kosciuszko and into the game. Ryder Davis, the junior right-hander, comes in in a tough situation. One out here. Runners at second and third. Cold Smith with the big RBI double. It's 3-2 to two Lewisburg here in the top of the sixth. Davis is a junior. He's appeared in eight games. Uh, only had uh, two starts, but he does have a staff leading 1.02 ERA. Opponents hit 233 against him. So the both the runners out there charge the three if they score, and hopefully Kobe Busby can do some damage. Infield's going to play in here to try not to give up any more. Kobe Busby, who doubled his last time up right down the third base line, they're giving it to him again. Colt, Colt Smith's double was the sixth hit for the Patriots. Uh, and, again, yeah, late, late game situation, very unorthodox to leave that third baseline wide open. First baseline is also wide open. Yep. Busby now at the plate. Ryder Davis comes to the stretch set. Fastball, he hit him right in the backside. Unbelievable. Now, <laughs> Kobe Busby would get hit by the ball. That's actually his ele- team leading 11th <laughs> hit by pitch this year. And, and that's not a bad uh, call right there. That's not a bad not really. uh, error for the Whippets. All right. it does is uh, now you're looking at Chris Taylor and you're to the speed part of the lineup. Uh, double play is going to be very difficult right here unless it's hard hit right at somebody. And so that margin of, of time that you have to make a play uh, really cut down a little bit right now, and the whippets are going to have to be perfect on this. Chris Taylor, two for two in the game so far, a double and a single. Stands in now, Ryder Davis in a windup. Fastball driven, base hit to left field. There's one run. Colt Smith's going gonna to go all over the wall. Colt Smith is going to come in. Kobe Busby's going to be waved in. No, they're going to hold him up. No, he runs he through the tag, it. and he's going to score. Rusty Cagle holding up the stop sign, and Busby said, no way. And he punched the air as if that's okay. And three runs off of the bat of Chris Taylor, a three-RBI double, his third hit of the game so far 
he's delivered tonight. Absolutely. You know, he's not the guy that you would have expected coming in. Really struggled during the, the previous round of the playoffs. But, wow, comes through in a big way here, his third hit of the night. Michael, he came in 1 for 11, hitting 091 for the playoffs and a 3-for-3 three three night, so you can get it from any part of this Patriot lineup. Now back to the top of the order is Lowell Haney. Swings at the first pitch in the dirt. Strike one, 6-2 to two now, Patriots lead Chris Taylor. He has come alive four hits, actually five hits in the seven, eight, and nine positions for the Patriots tonight. And Taylor getting a big lead there at second base. Haney. Yeah, try. Kobe Busby had the, the, the big uh, leadoff double uh, that when the uh, Patriots scored their second run. Uh, you had the big double here by Colt Smith and the bases clearing double by Chris Taylor. Well, the left fielder, Overstreet, misplayed that ball in the left field, allowing the ball to get to the dirt, or to the wall, rather, as that pitch goes in the dirt, one ball, one strike. Yeah, it looked like it may have taken a bad hop it out did. there. He had, to, he had to go at an angle, wasn't able to get over in front of it, and just took a hop over his shoulder. You know, I'm looking at Chris Taylor tonight versus where he was coming into the game. He looks to be a little bit more comfortable with the plate, standing a little bit more upright. Not falling over the baseball. Yeah, really, and man, he's a really lot of power tonight. Really squared that inside yeah. ball up. And Chris has a lot of power. You know, you hear the guys talk about it. Chris will, oh, you yeah. know, hits, hits a lot of balls out during batting practice, but just not his game. Real short, compact stroke, but uh, getting it done tonight. Haney in the game, one for two at the plate in a 2-1 count against Ryder Davis. Two runs were charged to Brody Threet. Two-two pitch now coming to Lowell Haney. So three giving up three runs. Three of the four. Ryder stands in and two-two pitch. That ball lifted down. And I'm not sure if it was caught or trapped by the left fielder. He's calling it down. And they are calling it down. He didn't he did trap it and then Overstreet not really uh, complaining about that. No, I guess he knew he trapped it, but a great play nonetheless, keeping the runner at second base. He's not, and even with the third base umpire over there, uh, that's the home plate umpire's call. Ultimately, looks like he gave a quick look down there to see if he was going to get any help. You know, didn't make a, a, a real aggressive safe call, but the best he could play. And, again, uh, Overstreet not complaining out there. Rudy Martin out the plate, runners at first and second and one out. Haney with his second hit of the game. Martin's going to try to lay down a bunt, a perfect bunt. No play's going to be made. And they're going to try to get Chris Taylor. but Excellent not job by good, Chris Taylor. Great Aggressive job. Aggressive turn, but only two steps past the bag. So yeah. Rudy, Rudy Martin again making things happen with his feet. Rudy, Puts down a great bunt. And that's his second bunt hit of the night, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. No, and it's his uh, first tonight. Okay. It seems like he has one every game. So. Yeah. <laughs> Now Hunter Wilson with a chance to really break it open here. He's struggled so far. I'd really love to two. see Hunter stay back and take that ball through the right side. I think that would really uh, get him back on pace to, to hitting like he was earlier in the year. Bases loaded. That pitch inside. Strike one. You know, I don't, I don't know that I've seen a high school player stay as hot for as long as Hunter Wilson was during the middle to late part of this season. Yeah, I agree. Hunter's been a big factor in the Patriots' season so far this season. Base is loaded now. One out. That pitch way outside. A great block by the catcher, Wesley Dew. Good job by Hunter there, giving directions down there at third. A lot of times when that ball's in the dirt, uh, the runner at third doesn't get a great look at it. And that, that hitter at home plate's got to either throw up the stop sign or bring him on. 1-1 one, one count, one out. Hunter Wilson facing Ryder Davis. Fastball inside, swung right through it. One ball, two strikes. Not seeing the ball well. Yeah, they're it's pulling his head. And, and they're not they're not giving Hunter much of a chance to hit the ball the other way either. Everything no. has been way inside, right on the right on the black part of the inside. Actually, he's the ninth hitter to come to the plate so far here in the top of the sixth. Change up, driven to left field. That's on the line. A great play by the left fielder. But it's going to be enough to score Chris Taylor. And a sacrifice fly. 
great job by Hunter Wilson. And there's what we're talking about, Michael. Again, that ball's in the air. There's no reason for Chris Taylor to be down the line at all. He needs to be standing there on the base and yet had to run back to the base after the catch was made. And uh, fortunately for the Patriots, a left fielder fell down on the play and he was able to score uh, on a, not a bang-bang play at the plate, but one where he had to slide in. Again, the speed for the Patriots paying off there. Runners at first and second, 7-2 to two now the score. Patriots on top of the Whippets. Runners at first and second, and Tanner Lloyd, who started this inning off with a leadoff double. You know, that we talked about at the top of the broadcast, one of the keys for the Patriots and for the Whippets is uh, the Patriots' ability to put up the crooked number. Five runs so far here in the top of the second. Uh, top of the sixth, rather. I was looking at the home plate umpire holding up two to make that, sure he yeah, had two outs. Making sure he had the right number of outs. He does. Patriots nine hits in the game so far. Tanner looks at Ryder Davis. Davis looks back in, delivers fastball, foul right into that Kosciuszko dugout. And, Michael, that seventh run is an all-important run. You, you can't get tied now on one swing of the bat. The Whippets would have to it's put great, together a really, really big inning to be able to catch up now. It only got two. It's getting late. But it sure would be helpful if they could add on another run or two at this point. It's never enough in playoff time until that final out is made. Never. And the 0-1 pitch. Ryder Davis. We saw that Saturday at Houston. I went into the last inning with a one-run lead, seven, eight, nine hitters due up. And uh, first pitch was a one hopper to the third baseman, one pitch, one out. And the next thing you know, they're walking off with a 4-3 win. That pitch outside, one ball and one strike. Looks like Tanner's doing a better job of tracking the ball. He was right on that pitch all the way to the catcher's mitt. Uh, struggled a little bit early in that Houston series and then came alive in game three and looks like that's carried over into the north half series here against Kosciuszko. 1-1 one, one pitch to Tanner Lloyd. Haney at second, giving Fitz fastball, fouled off. He just Pulled took off a little bit off just of that a fastball. Little bit. Yeah. Cody Cooper on deck. For yeah, Tanner the Lloyd's looking for the kill shot here. One, two, count. He just now he wants to put it in play somewhere. Rudy Martin at first. Yeah, anything to the gap right here will clear him. Crowd encouraging their junior pitcher. Change up in the dirt. Do doing a nice job. That is a tantalizing two strike pitch. Comes up to the plate right about knee level and then just drops. And these Patriot hitters have done a great job of laying off of it tonight. Very patient. Very patient. Grinding out some at-bats. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Two men on. Fastball in the dirt. And now the count's full, and you'll see the runners go here, Al. Oh, prettiest play in baseball right here. If you had that runner on third to add to it, just love this play. Uh, runners are going to check and make sure they're not going to want to leave it too early. But you've got speed on the bases, and a good single in between some folks may score a couple right here. The reckless and speedy Rudy Martin on first base. Full count. Pitch on the way to Tanner Lloyd. Fastball, and he fouled it off. Yeah, you know, Rudy could get a lot bigger jump even than he's getting. First baseman playing very, very deep. You know what? Rudy doesn't need a big lead. He does not. <laughs> I'd like to see him score on a single, though, Michael. I agree. He's got the speed to do it for sure. Full count now to Tanner. First and second, two outs. And right man, in the wheelhouse, he, fouled it straight back. He, means he was right on that one. Rudy Martin almost to the cutout there at second base by the time that one reached the screen. Playonsports.com. Bringing you the broadcast. Also, want to thank Homer Skelton Hyundai for all their support as well. If you couldn't make it, glad you could join us via the telecast. Three balls, two strikes. Curveball, and oh, he punched him out. 
He set it across the plate. And a backwards K for Tanner. And he Tanner not quite <laughs> sure why the catcher was tagging him on that. That ball was in the dirt. Gave him the stare, though, didn't he? He did. Now it's time for him to go back to work. Six outs away. But, again, uh, the whippets were uh, not making a lot of noise. And uh, they – they came out last inning, ground out a couple of a couple of runs, and uh, we'll see how they do now against senior Peter Barton, who's coming on to pitch for Lewisburg. So five hits for the Patriots. Lead-off double by Tanner Lloyd. Started a big inning, and that was a really big inning. Five runs to get the Patriots to seven to two. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Peter Barton going to come in, trying to close it out. We'll be back in just a bit. So the senior Peter Barton will come in and face the two, three, four hitters, Connor Hill, Ben Hudson, and Dylan Gentry. Only two hits for the Whippets tonight. That pitch inside. Peter coming in with a 1.86 ERA, 7-1 record, leads the team in strikeouts. Peter Boy, having a been great really, senior year. He's really good in the playoffs, too. 2-0 two and oh in three appearances. Uh, opponents hitting 0-80 against playing bingo against Peter Barton at 80 One ball and no strikes to Connor Hill. That pitch, fastball, strike one. Peter committed to Northwest Community College to play baseball there next year. He'll join ex-Patriots Tanner Densford and Tyler Scholl. One ball, one strike, curveball, strike two. Great pitch there. Right on the inside part of the plate. Hey, if you haven't seen that pitch a lot, that's that's a really difficult pitch to pick up. If Peter throws the ball upper 80s. He's been consistently 88, 89 most of his games this year, and he throws that curveball, hard curveball that breaks over the inside part of the plate. Fastball upstairs, and Connor Hill does a good job not going for it. Peter in for Tanner Lloyd. Tanner gives the Patriots five really solid innings tonight. Cruised through the first four, and then ran into a little trouble there in the fifth. Crossed up Cody Cooper on that pitch. It was a fastball right on the outside corner, and that looked like it could have been strike three. But Cody was expecting the breaking pitch, obviously. And if there's a pitcher on our staff you don't want to get crossed up with, it's Peter Barton. He's right. got nasty stuff. And, yeah. that, and that's the second time in the last two games that they've had some communication issues, and uh, Cody Cooper has been the recipient of a uh, of a miscommunicated pitch. Connor Hill trying to get on here. Full count. Fastball fouled off. Good pitch. Right and there in on his hands. You know, these guys don't just come over the middle of the plate with 3-2. You don't want to walk him and put him on right here, but a good location there on the inside. Martin coming set there, getting his signs from Cody Cooper. And delivers fastball, fouled off again. Connor yep. Hill having a great at-bat here for 
the Whippets in the bottom of the sixth inning. Absolutely. When you're five runs down, that, the key to the inning is the leadoff man. You get that pitcher thrown from the stretch all inning, uh, makes for a lot more stressful at bats than if he's able to stand out there in the full windup and just cruise through the inning. Three balls, two strikes. Peter backs off. Looked like Peter didn't like the call right there. Steps back on. And we'll see what he's got on this third 3-2 pitch. Peter's about 6-3 out there. Fastball inside, and Connor fouled it off again. This has become a great matchup so far. Absolutely. Peter, on the first 3-2 pitch, Peter came right inside on the hands, went away uh, after he fouled that one off, comes back inside here, and just able to get a piece of it. Who will win this battle? Good right by him. Strikeout for Peter Barton. Finally found the middle, the, the middle of the plate there, the, the pitch uh, that the hitter's been looking for and got him. Excellent start to the inning for Peter Barton. That's the second time Connor Hill has struck out for Tanner Lloyd. Two runs. He only gave up two hits. Left two runners stranded. He had five strikeouts. So a good night for the big fella. Peter Barton trying to come in now and nail it down for Tanner Lloyd. Tanner Lloyd was the recipient of that five-run inning, so he can be the winner. Now Ben Hudson, the first baseman, 0 for 2 in the game, and he looks at strike one. Peter coming in, filling up the zone like he did his last outing. Absolutely. The Patriots looking to take a 1-0 advantage in this series. You can steal one on the road as it gives up a base hit up the middle, softly hit ground ball, but it gets the job done. This matchup tonight in the north half, the winner of this series will go on to face the winner of the Newton County St. Stanislaus series. Try saying that three times real fast. <laughs> the St. Stanislaus Rockachaws, uh, Rockachaws. Pull, pulling the upset over the West Lauderdale Knights to get to the South State Finals. St. Stanislaus out of Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, right on the coast there. Newton County in uh, Decatur, Mississippi. As and Michael Newton, Dylan Gentry steps in. Newton County has, has had a fairly easy road to the playoffs. Uh, they, they were a number two seed, finishing second in the district of West Lauderdale. Probably glad they don't have to face those guys Guarantee again. Guarantee you. That pitch fouled off, and Peter Barton ahead of Dylan Gentry. No balls and two strikes here with a runner on first. St. Stanislaus with a very impressive run. Uh, they, they had to play... Uh, right off the bat, a North Pike team that was extremely strong coming out of that district with Columbia and Purvis. Uh, got by them in two games, uh, swept Mendenhall, who had, a, had an excellent record, and then the upset over West Lauderdale. The 0-2 pitch on the way. Barton taking a look at the runner at first, and smartly Dylan Gentry, who is grounded out to the pitcher both times up. Calls timeout. Didn't look like Peter Barton had any intention of ever delivering that pitch. Was just going to stand there until he had to call timeout. He's setting the pace out there. The 0-2 pitch on the way. Fastball just misses the outside part of the plate. Cody Cooper set up about six inches outside, and Peter Barton just threaded the needle on that. Just right down uh, the middle of Cody's body, hit that mitt, and uh, that's a pitch that at this level most umpires are not going to give you. The one-two pitch, fastball fouled it off right off of Cody Cooper again. He's taking a beating behind home plate tonight. And that's nothing new for Cody Cooper. He will uh, shake it off for a, a couple of seconds, take the helmet off, go to his knees just for a second, and then he'll pop back up ready to do battle again. A one-two pitch here. Peter Barton doesn't want to give anything too good out over the plate. Wants to just keep collecting outs. Hudson getting his lead at first. He'll pop off of there, and Peter Barton. Try that backdoor back. breaking ball. Uh, left Got it, it up. up a little bit. Kosciuszko hopeful that they can uh, tack on a run or two here in the sixth. As they patiently look on. That pitch fouled straight back, or I should say anxiously looking on. And they're down to five outs now. Peter Barton trying to, to lessen that total. Got a nice facility here. 
Very glad that they uh, were able to accommodate us. We're going to return the favor tomorrow. Very nice folks down here. Two balls, two strikes. Curveball got him. And they're going to throw down to second base. And the runners are automatically out. So Cody Cooper yeah, doing is. a nice job of trying to throw out the runner. As that pitch in the dirt, two outs, though. That's Peter Barton tricky, with his second strikeout. That's a trick he's seen before. You lose nothing as a batter by taking a few hard steps down the first, see if you can draw that throw. But Cody. Again, Cody's seen that at, at high levels of ball, and he's, uh, he's not at all phased by that. Throws down to second where the runner is safe. They now have a runner in scoring position, but two outs. And the whip is now down to four outs remaining. Catcher Wesley Dew stands in, looks at strike one. Peter, two strikeouts already strike in the bottom one, of the six. Right there on the edge of the plate. Just crossed it, just nipped that uh, front edge of the plate. Peter Barton on the corners tonight. Runner's going to take off for third base, thrown into left Man, field. And that's exactly what they're looking for. And here comes the throw home. They got they him. got him. Got him at the plate. Oh, and he's got to be thrown out of the game. He came yeah, in he, cleats up. Yeah, he came in with the cleats up. They're going to call him out. He should be out and ejected yeah. from the ball game, right. Michael. Right. That's that's dirty baseball. Right. He Cody have, Cooper's not happy. He may not have been doing that to be dirty, but you can't right. you can't do that. Umpires can't allow that, and it looks like they are going to make that call. Yeah, they called him out, and they're probably going to have to eject him out of the game, don't they? He did uh, – he did bring his cleat up, and, you know, you can't blame the runner. No, you I mean, can't. trying to make a play. You know, metal cleats are, are a great thing. They do uh, – I've heard people say that, that they really don't like them because of plays like this. Research has shown that they help you avoid a lot of knee and ankle injuries, but that's the play you're afraid of with the metal spikes, and that's why, as a player, you have to be responsible with that and not come in with the cleats up. Great play by the left fielder, Lowell Haney, backing up that throw and getting it in to Mason Gibbons who was, I guess he was trying to back out of the, not trying to get run over by the runner, and Cody Cooper looked like he made a pretty good throw. Yeah, so. Mason Givens did a great job there, not trying to rush it, caught the ball, saw what he had out in front of him, made a perfect throw to the plate. The ball was waiting on the runner there, and uh, excellent job. That's a, that's a big chance that you take right there, trying to steal third base in the first place, but that's exactly what they were looking for. Maybe felt a little overmatched by Peter Barton. He was having his way uh, with the whippet hitters, and you try to steal a run right there, and almost paid off, uh, but the perfect throw from Lowell Haney didn't try to do too much, hit his cutoff man quickly, and Mason Givens with the assist at the plate. And we go to the seventh now, 7-2 seven to two, Lewisburg. Cody, ta Cody is taking a beating. And uh, was it, um, I guess, uh, Ben Hudson, the first baseman, was the one that came in with the cleats up. Is he out of the game? No, he's still out there. And... Uh, Anyway, Patriots fortunate there. Could have been a third run cheaply, um, but nonetheless got the third out. Peter Barton only faced the three hitters as Wesley do. We'll come up to plate in the bottom of the seventh, but Patriots going to look to add here in the top half. Cody Cooper, Mason Givens, and Colt Smith will be the three hitters. Here in the top of the seventh. And Cody has taken a beating tonight, not just from the Patriot pitchers, but also uh, on that play at the plate. The ball was dislodged, uh, but the runner called out coming in with the spikes up, and the umpire right on top of that makes the call. So Cody will lead things off. Ryder Davis still in the game for the Kosciuszko Whippets. Tall right-hander will face Cody, and the umpire will call timeout. He's umpire having a word with the first baseman. He's still upset after that play. He was the one that slid in there. That pitch, strike one. And that's all you can do as a pitcher out there is just go right after the hitters, give your team a chance, try to keep it at five runs. 
and see if you've got a miracle left in the bottom of the seventh. Curveball inside, strike two. Actually, fastball ran in on him. Excellent movement on that pitch. I want to thank Ron Haney for providing internet coverage for us tonight. 0-2 pitch outside. Game two tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Friday night lights, Lewisburg High School. Need a good crowd out at the Berg. Yeah, please come out and support that team. Kosciuszko is, uh, has certainly done it tonight. Curve off. Lined out to the shortstop. Cody did a good job with two strikes there. But one out recorded here in the seventh inning. Mason Gibbons, uh, one for, I'm sorry, 0 for 2 in the game so far. You look at the Patriot hitters. It looks like hand. we will have a change out here, Michael. Yep, number 25, uh, which is Nicholas Frank, the DH, will come out in place of the first baseman. Ben Hudson, the left fielder, will come in, number 4. Logan Bell will go into left field. So Coach Jonathan Jones making a couple of defensive switches here. And Mason Gibbons at the plate. One out here in the top of the seventh. Pitch misses. Need all the support we can get tomorrow night. 7-2, Patriot leading. Here in game one at Kosciuszko, and that pitch called a strike to right the third the baseman. Yeah, Mason getting it done with the glove tonight. A couple of really nice plays, and then threw the, the strike to the plate there to end the last inning. Swing and a miss there. One ball and two strikes. Gibbons. Four hits in the last two games for him. Coming into this one. Very hot hitter with not a lot of at-bats this year. Pitch outside, two balls and two strikes. Just lessens the sting a little bit of losing your senior left fielder, Gabe Brown, an all-district all performer, uh, injured in a post-game celebration in game one against Houston. But Mason Givens has stepped in, uh, not in left field, but uh, plays third base, but several defensive changes needed to be made. But he's the one who's stepping in that spot in the batting order and uh, is doing a great job so far. Been one of the hotter hitters for Lewisburg. Givens looked at ball three there, now full count. One out here, top of the seventh. Kosciuszko crowd still cheering on their guy. Fastball up in and in, and he walked him. And just missed on that pitch. Second Mason Gibbons walk. right on top of the plate. Uh, great job of taking a borderline pitch and gaining his second walk of the game. Now Colt Smith with a big double. His first time up as Benji Galbraith will come in and pinch run for Mason Gibbons. Colt Smith coming up to the plate. He had one of the bigger hits of the night, that big double last inning that scored a run and put the Patriots on top. Huge double. That was a huge double in a critical moment. Really, really broke this game open. And he had an early double in the last game against Houston, the game yep. three Monday night, that, that really helped the Patriots build a lead in that game as they had a lot of two-out two RBI hits right. to put that one out of reach. So the pinch runner, Benji Galbraith, now at first base. As Colt Smith will come to the play with runner on, one out. One for three in the game. Grounded out to short, struck out, and hit that double we were talking about. You know, you're not going to see a lot of three for fours in the playoffs. So that, that one hit that you get a game, you need 
if that's in a big situation, uh, that's what you need to help your team. When the, you know, the pitching gets better every round deeper you go into the playoffs, and so you've really got to bunch those hits together and make them count. Can't say that about Chris Taylor, though, or Lowell Haney. That's right. Multiple They're hits for those tonight. guys. Patriots not likely to employ the running game here with Benji Galbraith on base. Pitch downstairs, two balls and no strikes. Now, now here's where that runner on Davis. base, though, causes him to uh, pay a little bit more attention to him because the, the Patriots have run a little bit tonight. And uh, so that, that allows Colt Smith to sit back and wait on a fat one here that he likes and he can drive. He's got some power. Ah. Uh. 2-0 pitch, swung at a ball up in his eyes. Coach Cagle not happy. Yeah, but that inside pitch is hard for Colt to lay off. Uh, that's the one he hit the double on. Uh, it's the one we saw him hit a pitch <laughs> in that last game that really wasn't a, 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 a typical hitter's pitch, but the way Colt swings, high inside pitch, just turned on and hit it right down the line. Two balls and one strike. All the Patriot hitters on top of the plate. Fastball inside, got him off the hand. Could be a double play. No, oh, took a bad hop. hop. Now he's not going to make a play at all. Hit right off the lip of the dirt and the grass out there right by second base. So what would be a tailor-made double play is now a base hit. And that's what you get into with, with these turf fields, these turf-looking fields, as you get the back edge of the grass there uh, that comes into play yep. that on the all-dirt skinned infield, uh, it probably takes a better bounce than that. So the shortstop not able to handle that bad hop. Don't blame him there. Runners at first and second. Now, I mean, it's Kobe Busby. Or middle to late, rather, because middle and halfway are the same. Yes. Just for those paying attention out there. Well, there will be plenty of them, and I'll hear it tomorrow, I'm sure. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Busby. One out. There's a ground ball. Base hit. No. First baseman made a nice play, and he can't make a play at all. Busby's going to be safe. Back-to-back -back hits for the Patriots. Now base is loaded. Kobe Busby coming in, batting only 214, coming into the uh, for the playoffs. Uh, but every one of those seems to have been a big hit, has added a couple of hits tonight, and gives the red-hot Chris Taylor an opportunity here with the bases loaded. Wow. He was in this situation <laughs> last inning and delivered the key three-run double. That is the, the, the big difference in this game right now. Yeah, definitely sharpened the knife blade. Chris Taylor, three for three now. Bases loaded, one out. Fastball swing. Chris and going right after that one. You can yep. tell he is wanting to hit right here. If he stays up top, on top of the ball as a hitter, a lot of power. Can't chase it here. One, No balls and one strike, one out. Fastball, and that popped up right in the infield. Umpires right away, infield fly rule. And two outs now. Okay. Chris got I'll a give it to you, to Chris. Hit right there. Yeah. yeah. Just Three got for four. Under. That's not a bad night out of the nine hole. So an F4 if you're scoring at home, which you're probably not. I wonder it, how many people we have scoring at home. <laughs> we have probably messed them up a few times. Uh, we're glad you could join us anyway. Michael Plumley, Al Ainsworth. Al's done a fantastic job. Hard to replace a guy like Ray Lauder. Bases loaded now for Lowell Haney. Pitch outside. For an old baseball guy like me, though, Michael, it's a pleasure just to sit up here and talk baseball and in high-pressure playoff situations. As a coach, absolutely love this part of the game where uh, every little play mattered. And uh, Coach Rusty Cagle, he is uh, wearing, a, wearing a path out there at third base but having a great time coaching this game tonight. Haney fouling that pitch off. Yeah, they're going to have to put some sand down in that box where Cagle's been standing. 
He's fortunate that I was able to pick up his baseball pants. You didn't just let school. everybody know that, did you? I didn't. Just his wife. She'll be upset knowing that he couldn't keep up with his pants after he gets on all the kids. But, yes, I did have to go get his pants from the school. One ball, one strike, two outs. That pitch fouled off, one and two. Senior Peter Barton down at Grenada this year had forgotten his jersey <laughs> and was just biding his time and finally went up next to Coach Cagle and said, uh, Coach, can I talk to you for a minute? Ended up entering the game as Colt Smith. Uh, had to borrow a jersey. Colt had just pitched the night before, I believe. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's so right. Coach Cagle didn't, didn't respond with a lot of emotion there, which is a good thing because this would have certainly been payback. One-two pitch to Haney, got him on the outside corner and punched him out. Yeah, that's that same pitch he got him on the first inning. A little off the plate, that's one that, you know, may not be a strike, but it's one you already know that, so you've got to punch that out the other way. Uh, just uh, flick it outside for a foul ball. But we go to the bottom of the seventh now, and the Patriots are three outs away with Peter Barton on the mound and uh, looking good to take it home back to Lewisburg tomorrow night with a 1-0 advantage, but three really big outs to get before we get there. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. Three outs away from game one win for the Patriots. They got a 7-2 to lead, bottom of the seventh. Due up for the Whippets of Kosciuszko, Wesley Dew, Austin Parker. And whoever's going to be hitting for Brody Three. I don't know who that is yet, so we'll get it figured out. And, Michael, in the South State, uh, they are actually moving a little bit faster than us, or they either started earlier. Newton County has already pulled off a 2-0 victory over St. Stanislaus. Lead that series one game to none. So, Newton County already has played a game tonight. Now, Peter Barton, 1-1 count to Wesley Dew. They battled each other before in the last inning. That pitch upstairs, strike two. And you like to see Peter come right out and go after the leadoff hitter this inning. So one ball, two strikes now to Wesley Dew. Curveball, strike three. He got he knew it. Inside and Back toward him and one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Two more to go, Patriots. And Peter Barton picks up yet another strikeout. Austin Parker, the center fielder, coming into this series, 358 batting average. He does have one of the three hits for Kosciuszko, and Peter Just hits him. him. Wow, didn't even look like it hit him, but it did. It glanced right off his just, jersey. Just caught his sleeve, and if you're going to take an 89-mile-an-hour fastball, that's the way you want to take it. So now a runner at first base, and Coach Cagle going to call his infield in as he takes a trip to the mound just to kind of reassure Peter, hey, look, we got a five-run lead. This runner at first base means nothing. That's right. Just try to get the hitters. Michael, a final from DeSoto County. DeSoto Central beat South Haven 2-1, to one, which wow. is a real scoring slugfest. They played three times this year and scored a total of four runs in the entire series. Right. 
So D.C. evens the season series, but more importantly goes up one nothing, one game to none in the, the north half 6A. Who All pitched for South Haven? Haven? Uh, don't have that. Okay. Congratulations to Soto Central. Just coming off a win Tuesday night against Clinton at the signing game three. Rain pushed that series back. Peter Barton now facing Davis. And looks at strike one. Davis does not have a recorded batting average. Ryder Davis has only had one plate appearance before tonight's game. Stands in with one out, one runner on. Pitch outside. Cooper not able to handle it, and the runner moves up. Looks like it was uh, short against Coates in that matchup with uh, Austin Riley coming on to pitch the seventh. Man, Austin has thrown a lot of innings the last several days. He has really he turned has been... some heads down in the Jackson area wow. as they play Clinton down there. And a lot of folks got their first look at what we've known already has, has been. A... I used to coach him, coach him for several years. He is a one-of-a-kind guy, so humble. We're talking about him on the way down. More importantly, though, Peter Barton trying to get the Patriots win – Game one. One ball, two strikes to Ryder Davis. As and again, Peter is setting the pace here. Steps off, and uh, he is really determining the course uh, of how this game's going to go, uh, even though we're right down to it. Swing and a miss. And there's Punched another him out. Strikeout. strikeout number four for Peter Barton. He just comes in and gets the strikeouts. Now last hope for Kaziesko will come at the hands of their designated hitter now playing first base, Nick Frank, who is 0 for 2, a strikeout and a flyout. You know, Michael Peter came into this season. You know, he knew he had the electric stuff, uh, but really didn't have a lot of game experience. And we've seen him, uh, just like he's doing tonight, again, controlling the tempo here, doing some really senior things out there that you would expect from a guy who's been on the mound uh, in key situations for two or three years. Fastball, strike one on the inside part of the plate. Peter Barton is filling up the strike zone, to say the least. He is really taking advantage of that, about one to two inches off the edge of the plate that the umpire's been given all night. Comes set, delivers curveball, and Cooper smartly. Austin Parker not trying to advance with two outs here. You're down five. Run means absolutely nothing. Right. So a 1-1 count now to Nick Franks. Peter Barton comes set, checks the runner, looks in, and delivers. Strike two, fastball right down the middle of the plate. And down to the last strike. Any time in the playoffs that you, you know, you change pitchers, you never know what's going to happen. And to see Peter Barton come in just throwing strike after strike, just like he's done in every other appearance in the playoffs. There's a base hit to left field. The runner's going to try to score. No, he's going to hold him up. Yeah, so coach. a good job on the curveball. Nick Frank's able to stay back and drive it to left in the inning alive. And that's the first uh, base hit, if, I'm, if I remember correct, second base hit that Barton has given up tonight. And he's really been in command. The whip is starting to show a little bit of noise now, make a little bit of noise. Their fans back in the game a little bit. But, again, the important number on the scoreboard is the two, two outs. The, the Patriots need one more out of any kind, uh, and they've got two or three batters to be able to record that third out. you got the nine-hole hitter, Rivers Dickerson, at the plate now with two runners on. And, Al, I was going to say, Peter's given up two hits. Both of them were curveballs. I'm not going to that pitch again tonight. He's filling up the zone with the fastball. Make them make you beat you. Yeah, if I'm throwing a breaking ball, it's going to be out of the strike zone on an 0-2 pitch, something like that. But, you know, down the lineup, your number nine man, go right after him. That's what he did with the first pitch, and it's called a strike. Now the game, pitch two, strike two on the inside corner. No balls and two strikes. Michael, big upset. I, I think some would consider it an upset, uh, at least how the game played out. But Harrison Central with a 10-1 victory over Oak Grove tonight. Wow. With, with Oak Grove's pitching staff, they, they've got pitchers that haven't given up that many runs all year. Exactly. No balls, two strikes to Dickerson. And 
Peter Martin, he wanted that pitch up and away, but didn't get it. Kirk McCarty, the fine junior for Oak Grove, goes only four innings in that game. One ball, two strikes here in Kosciuszko. The pitch and just misses in the same high. spot. Two balls and two strikes to Rivers Dickerson. The leadoff hitter, Ryan Rigby, on deck. Runners at first and second as I, or first and third, as I said, two outs. Peter trying to get the last out. Fastball fouled off. Just got a piece of that one. They're fouling off a number of pitches. They're making Peter throw quite a few pitches here, but really haven't caught up to that fastball yet. Some of the fans yelling out that they thought that uh, Rivers Dickerson hit the mitt of Cody Cooper. That's already been called once tonight. Same batter at the plate, too. The 2-2 pitch fouled up. Cooper could go after it and take the play, but he... Well, I guess he didn't even see it. Yeah, Peter Barton there has got to immediately point to where that ball is, help him take those first two or three steps before he ever sees the ball. Had a lot of trouble with that type of play this year so far by we the catcher. Have. A little bit of – it cost us the DeSoto Central game, three to nothing. Tanner Lloyd pitching a great game, bases loaded. Well, Tanner uh, had walked a run in by that point in the game. Right. Uh, came out, tried to do a little bit too much. And, uh, but, you know, that game you can look back at, and, but if you don't score, yep. you can't win. 2-2 two, two pitch from Peter Barton. Fastball. And he just got a piece of it again. As just Rivers. raises off of Cody Cooper's mitt right there. Uh, Peter Barton looking to clamp this one down man, for Lewisburg. He is uh, throwing nothing but strikes. you got to love to see it. Two, two, and two, two on, two out, two, two count. Peter Barton just as cool as ever out there on the mound, looking to get this third out. Demeter never changes. Back. No, it never does. Looking to send this one back to Lewisburg with a 1-0 lead. Two, two pitch, curveball, fly ball to right field. Who better to catch it but Chris Taylor in the third out recorded, and Lewisburg picks up win. In game one of a best of three series, a huge win on the road at Kosciuszko to take a 1-0 series lead. Chris Taylor making the final out. What a job by both pitchers tonight. Tanner Lloyd getting the win for the Patriots. Chris Taylor, big night at the plate in that nine hole, able to produce some runs. And Al, you got to give all the credit to that Lewisburg team who didn't look so hot in that Houston series they looked really crisp tonight. A couple of base running mistakes, but outside of that, they looked really good. Yeah, I had the play in the field that, that uh, cost them the first base runner, but uh, both pitchers, Ryan Rigby and Tanner Lloyd, cruising through the first few innings. Uh, looked like this game was going to take place in about an hour and a half, and uh, the Patriots finally slowed the game, ground out some at-bats, and uh, three leadoff doubles tonight, though. If you start every inning off with a leadoff double, you had a lot of chances to score and put a lot of pressure on the defense. Uh, give credit to Kosciuszko when the Patriots jumped out to a 2 nothing lead. They came back, made some things happen on the bases, got the, got the uh, tie on a balk call, and, uh, but the Patriots jumped right back with a great fifth inning and added to it in the sixth and come away with the victory tonight. Well, there you see it, folks. The Patriots pick up the win 7-2 to two off nine hits. They did have three errors in the field for Kosciuszko. Only two runs, four hits, and one error. A lot of credit to that Patriot pitching staff. Most importantly, to Coach Cagle getting win number one in the North Half Championship. Game two tomorrow night. That's right. Back Should be a, a great night. matchup tomorrow night. You'll probably see the first baseman, Colt Smith, on the hill for the Patriots. Try to send the Patriots back to that state championship game. They're just one win away. Right, and the, the Patriots used two pitchers tonight. Peter Barton would probably uh, be available on Saturday for an inning or two in relief should they need him. Uh, but big advantage, though, because we looked at, uh, I believe it was three or four different uh, Kosciuszko pitchers tonight. Well, for Michael Plumley, Al Ainsworth, we certainly enjoyed 
the drive down here, the hospitality by the Kosciuszko uh, folks here. We hope to return the favor. Folks, treat them with kindness. They obviously did us tonight. Very appreciative of that. What a great game. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Safe travels. If you're going to make it back home from Kosciuszko and come out and support those Patriot baseball boys. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night.